2017 was a watershed season. Hartbury took the mantle. Exeter relinquished their crown. Loughborough were the entertainers. Durham expected more. Leeds Beckett showed promise. Cardiff Mets gave us glimpses. Northumbria learnt lessons. While Nottingham Trent, they've joined the party. Oh, there could be an opportunity here! And he goes! Starts in Bath, it climaxes in Twickenham, it ends in glory. Welcome to Bath's Super Rugby 2018. Welcome to a wet and blustery sports training village in the historic city of Bath. Tonight it plays host to the opening fixture of Bucks Super Rugby 2018. The University of Bath take on Leeds Beckett in round one. Kickoff is at 6.30 but we will be keeping you company until the game boots off. Good evening, my name's Joe Burns. I will be your MC guiding you through the twists and turns of what we're hoping to be another epic season of Bucks Super Rugby. Throughout the season, I'll be ably assisted by my wingman Hugo Southwell, a man with 59 caps for Scotland, with spells at Watt and Stade Francais. He is the expert who will be analysing the ins and outs of the games and the season itself. We're also very fortunate to be joined by Andy Rock, who is the academy manager of Bath Rugby. Very personally, a recent tie-up with the uni. We're going to touch on that later, but first of all, welcome, boys. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so, last season, it blew away all expectation. Uh, you were there every step of the way, Hugo. What are your reflections on what happened? Well, yeah, it was a memorable start, inaugural season of, of Buck Super Rugby, and. Uh, you know, we ended up with the four teams we sort of expected to be there. You know, Loughborough, Hartbury, Bath and Exeter competing in those, uh, you know, the latter stages of the tournament. So, you know, expecting more competitiveness this year. I, I, the classic game to start. Bath, you know, quarter-finalist last year against Leeds who struggled but then nearly created an upset in that quarter-final against Hartbury away at Hartbury. So a great test to see where both teams are. Leeds have had a huge 10-week pre-season. You spoke to Kerry Wood earlier. They seem in good, good, good nick, ready for a huge battle against uh, this Bath. Well, look at this Bath, this Bath team. It's a big old pack out there. Monstrous, aren't they? For these conditions, you would expect them to really front up. So it's going to be a great match, indeed. Yeah. And that's uh, that's bearing in mind as well that Bath have lost a few heavyweights in their pack. So they lost Alex Wood from last year. They lost another prop. Their influential hooker Doughty, he's injured at the moment, but there's some boys who are stepping into the breach. You'll know them well from uh, from working with them in pre-season. Yeah, indeed, we've we've worked together quite closely over the short pre-season for Bath this year. Um, certainly, comparative to other sides, I would expect. Uh, but there's a good group of young men there who, you know, the the league itself is certainly about performing against other teams, but it's also driven by development. And I think there's a great chance for some of the young players here to develop this season. And the, so as I alluded to before, you've always had links with the university, but you've been instrumental in making those links official. You've a three year obligation now uh, tied in with the uni. How is that relationship going to work and how is it going to be beneficial to both parties involved? Well, the way that we see it as a club is, is, is kind of twofold. It's, it's a really powerful way of supporting our player development pathway. But equally, it's, it's about coaching, it's about the wider space of development that we can work together on. You know, the university is fantastic, the facilities, the staff involved, and and the vision that they have about creating something special that we share as a club. Um, 
I think we can definitely achieve things on both the playing and the coaching front. Um, the main part of the agreement is, is very much about how we support things off the field and the coaching and the support programmes which the players benefit from. I was going to say because having spent the day here, I was down here a couple of weeks ago, the facilities here are, are off the reservation. so. They're less benefiting from a nice squat rack at your place. It's the mentoring from from the pro players, the sharing of coaching philosophies. That's the stuff that they're really looking. You're really looking to benefit from. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't think you can you can separate coaching and playing in terms of the experience. We want our we want our young coaches and, and the the guys that are here tonight with the University of Bath are, are, are our coaches. Um, Aaron and James here leading the program, but Mark Willie and Lewis Messer are employed by the club and and then come and work here with Aaron to lead the program and. I mean, to support a genuine coaching pathway, we've got young coaches developing experiences as well alongside the players. Um, can only benefit, and they're, they're completely integrated in the club and, and they're every day with our first team staff and our coaching staff as well, which you know, we're, we're very lucky at the club at the moment to have guys leading our programmes who are really inclusive and it's a, it's a really open environment um, as a professional club. Very cool for the boys, right? Yeah. Did, you, did you have much of that when you were playing? Did you have tie-ups with universities and mentoring players? No, I think it's something that's uh, that's disappeared a bit. It's great to see this relationship tied up, this three-year relationship. What it's going to do is going to hopefully bridge the gap where if an opportunity comes for any of these guys, I'm sure speaking to Andy, you know, even if two guys make it from Bath University to professional rugby, just bridging that gap between university to professional rugby by having this facilities available to the players is a massive step forward and the students, they get that taste of professionalism whilst not sacrificing a degree or further, further ambitions. Yeah, well, I remember, I remember Graham Henry when he was coaching the All Blacks. He said, you know, that one of his best players was Conrad Smith because he he was a rounded individual. He experienced life. He had a degree. He worked alongside his rugby. You know, he wasn't the sort of guy that put too much focus on. You. These days, if you, for me, I'm a big believer. That if you go too full into it and you're too focused on being the biggest guy, on being the quickest guy, you know, it's not necessarily it's counterproductive. You need to be a rounded individual, and uh, that's what this relationship for me is, is sort of bridging. Um, and it's great. It's great news for everyone. I read, uh, I read an article online the other day, I forget who the author was, but the title was There is nothing more boring than a rugby player. And what he was getting to was the people who just live and breathe it, they don't think about anything else, they don't have any other hobbies, other interests. They, they lack that roundedness to them, which makes them you know, a better man and thus a better player. As you said with the All Blacks, they say a better man becomes a better rugby player. Yeah, and we spoke about that. I mean, I'm sure Andy could uh, allude to that as well. We spoke about it beforehand, and, and that's also something you're trying to develop as well. Oh, without a doubt, I think... Um, the, we, we have a firm belief that supporting the development of our players off the pitch, and, and some of that's through uh, interventions we can put in place, but you, you can't retrofit life skill. Yeah. And I think that's a great thing. We, we, you take a lot of young players who are destined to play the professional game. Uh, they need to experience life away from it. And, and I think, you know, both sides of the coin, you get some players who are not in the professional pathway yet at the university who get opportunities to be coached and to be in around an environment that is. But equally, young players who are already professionals from a contractual point of view, they need to come and study and, and broaden their life experience and, and their prospects for the future. So, you know, the, we're at an academic institute. There's also a lot of research to suggest that that does provide players with a more rounded balance and, and that they enjoy the game and perform better in the game as well. So, yeah, it's, it's a great partnership and one which can only benefit players who are in our system as pros, but also those who are in our region um, to get good experiences. And conversely, due to the level that this game is being played at at university now, players who might have missed out on academy, might have been overlooked, now have a shop window where they wouldn't have had aspirations to play pro or kick on, but now they're in the spotlight, they're being recognised, they've got the pro partnerships. Yeah. It's a new lease of life for some guys. Yeah, it is, and there's, you know, you don't get many opportunities at university. To, what, the, gone are the days when you were 18, you know, and, and, and uh, sorry, it's now apparent that you can get to university and still get an opportunity. Before, it was 18 year old, you were picked up, um, and, and you didn't get a chance, you had to study while you were playing. Yes. I think now, it's, this sort of relationship again is giving people the opportunity to not be missed. Um, and, that, and that's exciting. There's a lot of guys that we've spoken to last year during this um, that did exactly the same. You know, guys like Simon Hammersley was, you know, went from Durham straight to Newcastle, but he got his degree, and that's happening a bit more now. And I think it, it creates a better individual on the rugby pitch. Yeah, I feel I think it's exciting times for Bath Uni because I know that Exeter and Exeter Chiefs have done it well for a long time. Hartbury and Gloucester are synonymous with each other. I guess Leicester and Leicester and Loughborough, yeah. and it's probably these pro partnerships that bridge the gap to get into the high echelons of Bucks uh, because 
really the top three teams have been Hartbury, Loughborough, Exeter for a long period of time. And with that pro guidance, the other teams have an opportunity to get there. Without a doubt. And I, there's, a, there's, there's different approaches in, in different universities as there is in the club game. I think the great thing to recognise is around the fact that you know, two, two great establishments working together will typically lead to some good stuff. Yeah. And I, as long as it's authentic and you want to provide a genuine pathway for people to enjoy what they do and have good experiences, you, you'll get good outcomes. And whether that's people loving their time here for three years because of the partnership but, but never playing professional rugby, or, or as we say, the, the odd few who might come through you didn't <laughs> expect, it's, it's all good outcomes. Hey, I was chatting to Will Britton earlier as well. He was so psyched to, I know he's been involved in Bath A-League, but so psyched to be around all those boys, getting some nice stash, you know, being down at Farley House, having all the trimmings. And just that when you're treated like a pro and you have that special attention, then you start to behave a bit more like a pro and, you know, very, very excited. So let's move on to the league last year. As I said, you were ever present there, Hugo. You know, who performed, who... Who didn't imp who didn't perform? Who showed uh, green shoots? Well, I think for me, you, you've got to take Exeter, Loughborough, and Hartbury as the three teams that sort of were the most consistent. Um, yeah, we saw some brilliant performances from other teams, but they weren't consistent enough. And that's what I, I feel this year. The league has definitely got closer. We talked about Leeds, Beckett, who are playing tonight uh, against Bath. They've they've been really smart in their recruitment. You know, yes, they've got eight freshers playing, but those freshers aren't necessarily 19, 20, or, or even 18. You know, some of them, are, some of them are 26, 27, have got experience in playing in higher leagues uh, overseas. So I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with this 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 year. Yeah, that's interesting. How would you approach the cyclical nature of university rugby? Because obviously, if you're a club, you can build and you have legacy players that are there for a decade. You build a core and you can put other people around them. But at uni, you, you've got a three-year cycle, four-year if people do a masters. How do, how do you how do you approach that? Well, I think that's part of the management and and, and the structures that are put in place to cope with that. You know, it's not easy. You're, you're one year you're coaching. You know, guys might go off and play professional rugby. They might play for academies, and so they don't get to play for the universities as much. So it's part of the the management. And I was speaking to Andy about this with, with Aaron and, and, and there's guys at Bath here. That's something they do very well. Um, and it's it, it's difficult. It is difficult. You know, Hartbury, to take Hartbury for example, they're playing National One uh, on, on a Saturday. Or well, they're playing Championship now yeah. on a Saturday. Sm smashing it in the yeah. Championship. Yeah. And as then well. they're playing in the, in the Super Rugby on a Wednesday. So, uh, you know, sometimes a Friday. So they've got to juggle their resources. Yes, they've got the, the, the squad depth to do it, but it's very difficult. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting point. How do you juggle A League obligations with Bucks obligations? Because there's probably going to be a bit of pull, pushing and pulling between the two camps. Yeah, to a degree. I, and I think sometimes you've got to step back from the, the week that you're in and, and look at the big picture around those things. Like, Part of the strength of the partnership and, and what we're trying to achieve is, is around the excitement of where we could be in two years and three years. And the three-year commitment initially is very much a platform for us to see how we work together, but not with a view to not working together again. Like we really want this partnership to grow, and I mean the, the the balancing act this year is going to be really important. Um, the reality is, and if we we take it back to the the first point of why we all do it, is we give a good experience to the players in there, and sometimes it's good for some guys to come with us. Yeah. Sometimes it's right for them all to be here. Um, I think if we keep the most important thing as the most important thing, which is what's right for the player at that time, we tend to be able to make good decisions with each other. Um, it, you know, it helps working with good people. The, the staff here are fantastic. The, the people around the rugby program with Aaron and, and the guys, but also above them in terms of the director of sport and management. Um, we're all working together for, for really authentic reasons. So I, I, think we're, I think we'll manage that stuff quite well. I hope we will. Um, but again, it, we take it back to what, what's good for the players at that point in time and I think we'll make good decisions together. So we'll just have a little bit of a spotlight on Will Britton who's the Bath captain, you'll know him well, you know him well from last year, the, the boy's got a head of shoulders on him, a pretty big set of shoulders at that as well, what, what, like, what was his influence at Bath last year? Well, again, I think the way that Bath played last year, it'll be interesting to see how they've adapted their game. You know, yes, terrible conditions tonight, and, and it's going to come into a forward battle, really. But, you know, with Will Britton, he leads from the front. He's a big, physical man. And he's going to take the game to the opposition. And, you know, looking out there, the pack with him, there is some huge, huge Aren't men. I'm glad you retired, Hugo. I'll tell you what, everyone's <laughs> grown a bit since I finished. But, no, it's, it's, you know, it's great to see. Everyone's in great physical condition. Um, and it's going to prove to be a, you know, it's going to be a slugfest out there. But Bath, for me... How far have they taken their game? Last year, they played a very a basic game and a very forward oriented game. If they can develop that and mix it up, I think they'll be a force to be reckoned with. They certainly lacked a little bit of consistency because they got some massive Ws. They beat Durham away twice, they beat Loughborough here, but then 
with respect, they lost to Northumbria and they didn't perform consistently throughout the season. So that's got to be something they're looking they're looking to rectify. Yeah, I think every team's looking for consistency. As I said at the start, there's three teams that were really consistent. The rest were, you know, fleeting performances. You know, it's one good, one not so good. You look at this Leeds team, you know, they didn't perform last year. Yes, they didn't lose by big margins in all the games and they nearly upset Hartbury in the quarterfinals, but they didn't perform and they're looking to put it right this year. Um, which players have you got your eye on tonight for Bath? We'll, we'll, we'll look at Bath first and then we're yeah, going to look indeed. at Leeds. Uh, there's, a few, there's a few guys who've really impressed over the summer with the work we've done okay. together. Um, if, as you said, the game maybe will suit some of the bigger fellas. I, I'm looking forward to seeing Will Britton play. He's, he's had a couple of injuries in pre-season which have knocked him off a little bit. Equally, Jack Davis, who starts in the back row today, um, has, has shown up really well at times across the summer. Um, again, Will Flynn, who plays 10 today, but is, is a 9-10, played, ten, played 9 in the Bucks League last year. And has... Yeah, how, is, how has his transition gone from 9 to 10? Because he was an influential 9 last year, but you brought in a very good 9 this year, hence Will's, Will's move to 10. Yeah. And you've lost Ludie Hopkinson. Yeah, indeed. I, I... I'll be interested myself to see how he goes. He's played nine for us in some of the early games earlier this season um, and played really well. I think the transition will come fairly naturally to it, natural to him, but uh, it is a different game. I, I like I like him as a nine. I equally am really excited to see him as a ten in a different competition. Uh, I think the main thing that to be aware of is it's more about how, how does he balance with that with the players around him. To have a, a good nine against a, behind a strong pack can work really well. If the pack go well, I'd expect him to do well at 10 in the same way and you, so that, you know, we've got some big ball carrying centres outside him that he can, if he utilises well could have a really strong game. Well it's going to be very valuable having two proper organisers in these conditions because we love the piano movers but they can get a bit lazy around the park especially when their jerseys are soggy so with both of them marshalling them around the pitch then you should see a hungry workforce out there. You mentioned the centres, those you've got master student, a third year there, both very very experienced they lead the defence, they're going to be the linchpins of the back line. Yeah, without a doubt. I think, you know, the, the reality of the, of the threat that will probably come from, uh, from, uh, from Leeds tonight is that they're going to have to pull the defence around and get some width in that, in that defensive line so they can be aggressive and go forwards. Um, if they don't do that for whatever reason, and the, the, certainly the centres can, can play a big part in organising that, um, there is a chance that Leeds will get on the front foot and start to cause some problems. They, they've definitely got some players capable of doing that. Um, equally on the other side of the ball, if Craig Duncan gets some go forward and they can start to get round corners and get these big fellas in the game, they, they could, Bath are going to cause some problems as well. So it's a, it's a really exciting challenge to see who comes out on top in those early stages. And just a word on Will Partington, because obviously he's uh, been involved with Bath. Yeah. Obviously not a night for him, um, but you know, what can we expect <laughs> from him? Um, uh, it'd be a great a great test actually for Will. He, he's, he certainly t typically would be a runner. Um, I think the, the natural transition for a young guy coming out of school and having to make decisions on running, passing and kicking, um, having been a strong schoolboy is, 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 is really where the nuts and bolts are. And, and I, I think tonight's actually a really good night for him from a learning point of view. Can, can he make good decisions on when to put the ball on his foot um, versus try to take people on? He, he's, he's a guy who can beat people, he's a guy who can make tries and, and will certainly get on the end of some. Um, but can he make good decisions? And I, that's the things that we'll be working on, on with him over the coming months and probably years. Nice. So, so Jack London's got the 15 jersey for Bath this evening. <laughs> what would you at least like to see come your way if you were wearing that jersey tonight? I, I think mean, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? The, bomb, the bomb's <laughs> going up, isn't it? I tell you what, it's, uh, it's a pretty murky night. Irrespective of the floodlights on, it's, it's windy, it's wet, it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's your ideal nightmare. Uh, for, for, for a fullback, but he'll be tested early on, no doubt. The kicking games will be crucial. The, the halfbacks tonight, as much as the forwards will, will dictate the game, the halfbacks and, and the territory that they'll play will be crucial in whoever wins this game because you're not going to see, it's highly unlikely you're going to see tries from 80 metres. It's going to be a lot of kick, and kick tennis, um, and whoever wins that territory battle is likely to come away. So for me, you know, Will Flynn and, and Luca Petrosi at, at 9 and 10 are key for Bath. All right then, well, we've given our two cents at the moment. We're going to look at Leeds in a second, but we caught up with the coaches earlier. Uh, we caught up with Aaron James, the bath coach, and Kerry Wood, the Leeds Beckett coach. Both very excited. Here's what they had to say. Hey, uh, how's, how's pre-season gone for you? Yeah, pre-season's been great. Um, yeah, we've had nothing to do but play rugby and uh, you know, get involved in the sun's 
the sun's been out, so yeah, we've had some good training, some good learning, and uh, yeah, we've put ourselves in hopefully a good place for today. And you lost a few key players from last year, like Ludy Hopkinson, Hugo Styles. Have you got some young guys who are ready to step into the breach and fill those voids? Yeah, that's university rugby. We're always going to lose some. They're only here for three, maybe four years. Um, yeah, we're, you know, it's just that rolling break, but we've had a, a good succession in other years. Um, so, you know, we're, we're pretty pleased with the guys that have stepped up. Um, they've, they've worked hard over the summer and stepped up and they get a bit of a shot. So, yeah, we're just, we're, you know, just keen to see how, how they're going to go. Who are the men to watch today for Bath? Oh, that, that, hopefully the whole lot. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's hard to answer. I never, never usually pick out individuals, but, you know, that there's... There's a good bond, uh, you know, you've got captains back, Will Britton, and we've got some, you know, some stability and some, some key positions. So, yeah, you know, and some good leadership without, yeah, throughout. So we're hoping that will show through today. And do these slippery conditions change your tactics at all? Yeah, of course they do. But, um, they change everyone's. Um, but you've got to adapt. And, you know, it's a game of rugby. I think we're, we're going to have some other wet games this year. And, and, you know, although we haven't had too many wet ones to, to train with in pre-season, this is a chance to see who adapts the best, you know, what a set piece is like. You know, obviously what the handling's like with the high ball and, and, and ball in hand. And, uh, you know, that, that tackle percentage. And I know that sounds cliche, but that's, you know, comes back to the, the, the good old basics tonight. New ones with that. Great stuff. I appreciate the time and all the best, Aaron. Cheers, mate. All right, Kerry, thanks for joining us. You've had a 10 week pre season. Your boys must be the most prepared team in the land. I think it's Chinese whispers that. I think it's really. So, yes, yeah, it's week nine. Um, yeah, we are prepared. We, you know, we've, we've worked hard. The boys worked hard. Staff around the boys have worked hard, so yeah, what will be will be. We're ready. And that amount of time together, that doesn't just build rugby competence; it builds, it builds great team morale. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, that's one thing that uh, we wanted to do through the leadership group this year is a culture, culture sort of shift, and uh, we've done that. I think you know, and the boys have, um, you know, gone out for meals and done various things off the training park this over the last eight weeks, and uh, you know, so yeah, yeah, I think the cultures and. Uh, they're like a family, I'd like to say. Yeah. Nice to hear. Um, you've retained quite a lot of your players from last season. They'll have learned a lot of lessons from last year. Who was a very influential player. Are the boys ready to step up and fill those big shoes? Uh, yeah, I'd like to think so. You know, as you said, it was a pretty tough season for, for all the boys last year. We had a lot of first years last year, which, so, you know, the experiences they went through this year, hopefully we'll see the fruits of it this year. And, um, you know, Roy, Roy Mason's a big loss for us, or would be a big loss for any team. You know, he's an excellent scrummager, but there's a, uh, his understudy, uh, Xavier Valentine. You know, he, he spent a lot of time with, with Roy and, and myself and other coaching staff, and, you know, he's ready to step up and he's excited about that process. So he's starting tonight and show what he's got. So, yeah, hopefully it would be good. And I know that you boys like to play a little bit, but in these weather conditions, it's stick up your jumper time. Never stick it up your jungle time, yeah. It's 2017, mate. It's, uh, you know, let's let's chuck the ball around and have fun. Get the ball into space and uh, see what we can do with it. That's about it, you know. Zhu Wei. Okay, thanks for your time, mate, and good luck today. So there was Kerry Wood there. Um, contrary to our predictions, he just said to us that uh, they're going to play ball, basically. Maybe that's a little bit of subterfuge, I don't know. But last year, on paper, Leeds Beckett had a bit of a woeful season. They lost all their fixtures in the league, but they lost a lot of them narrowly. And if you look into it, they, they nearly beat Hartbury in the knockouts. Yeah, and, and eight new players this year. Yes, they're not uh, all the, the sort of newbies that we expect or the age of, of, of freshers that we expect. Some of them are a bit older, uh, more experienced guys. You know, one of the back rowers, Visser, who uh, you know was offered a contract by the Stormers, now comes in. He finds himself playing at Bath Uni in this weather rather than in the, in the, in the Western Cape in beautiful sunshine. Um, but he'll add that steel to the back row. Um, you know, there's, there's guys across, you were talking about the scrum half and also fullback as well, Sam Allen, so just gives a bit of an insight to those guys. Yeah, I think that, that it's a really interesting year for Leeds. So, uh, it's Kerry's first full year and after a transition year last time around and it's probably a chance for him to put his stamp on the programme this year. And I said they've recruited well, as you say, but equally guys like Sam Allen who have come through a strong academy and an England pathway programme as an 18-year-old. Um, and he, he can play. And, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them if they get momentum in the game and regardless, regardless of conditions where they try and shift the ball a little bit. Um, 
you know, as you say, it's t testing testing uh, conditions for a fullback. But if you're getting the ball on front foot and space in front of you, you know, you you can still play as a bit of a runner. So you got you got the knowledge here, because in a cruel twist of irony, you were quite influential in getting a lot of these boys to lead uh, from your time there. So you got the inside knowledge at least. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I've worked with Kerry for quite a while and, and worked with him in, um, in the last few years before I came down to Bath up at Leeds, and, and I've worked with quite a few of the players up at, up in the up in the Beckett team. So it's it's, it's great for me. It's a fantastic fantastic night to come and watch some rugby with some good young guys playing um, but it will be really interesting uh, there's there's some really key battles there they've recruited big I mean you look at Bath Pack and there's some big fellas but they've recruited some big guys in there yeah it, I think it'll start pretty attritional as you say the kicking game will be key and uh, they've got the opportunity to do that they've got some experience at nine which uh, which I think could help them um, and could help them manage the conditions and get get their team moving forwards yeah and uh, Hugo you mentioned the scrum half Connor Lloyd Wales under 20s, former Scarlet, so you've got another general on the opposition marshalling those guys. That's where that's where the key battle is to keep out of the halfbacks. Yeah, and it's, it's it's in these conditions. It's been that link player. You know, we said he's got to he's got to play he's got to play territory as much as he's got to he's got to mix his game up. In these conditions, um, that's exactly what he's got to do. But he's also got to get the territory for, for his forwards to get in the game. And uh, you know, with that experience, should come a performance that uh, that most people would expect, especially uh, his his director of rugby, Kerry Wood. So they'll be looking to start this game well. When you come down to a place like Bath. Uh, in these conditions, you know, the crowd's building out really nicely, fresh as week here. You know, there's a lot of pressure on these guys to perform from day one. They'll want to, they want to step up these leads, guys. Desperate, desperate to get that first W. So as you said, the, the atmosphere's building nicely. We've got the, we've got the university radio in the background. We've got a lot of supporters here. It's fresh as week at Bath. It's sports day today. It shows that, you know, while there is that professional element, we can't forget that these guys are students. You want to have fun. You want to be soaking up the atmosphere, playing in front of your friends. Maybe have maybe snaking a beer after the game. You know, we can't forget that with these young men, can we? No, that's part of the experience, and I think that's the fantastic thing. We've talked about the education and the rugby. You know, socially, it's a great place to be, and you know, as you said, the crowd's building up already. The rain's coming down, but they're still going to come and watch, and it's a great experience for these guys. Okay, righto, so that is enough analysis for you. Um, if we're very, very social here, so if you want to tweet us, the hashtag is Bucks Super Rugby, so get tweeting with your questions and your views. However, it's now time for me to throw it up to Johnny, who's in the crow's nest, who's going to call this game for you. Joe, thank you very much. Good evening, one and all. The long, hot summer is over. And now back to the cold winter and enjoying evening rugby. Here on Wednesday nights, the Bucks Super Rugby begins in earnest, and we're here in North East Somerset for Bath versus Leeds Beckett. The opening fixture of the 2017-18 Bucks Super Rugby season. So then, let's run you through the two sets of 15 that will contest this first tie. Beginning with the home side, Bath. Ten of these gentlemen played last season. And they begin with get Ben Gatton 1, George Frampton 2, Austin Hayden 3. The second rows of Will Britton, the captain 4, Scott Russell at 5. Jack Davis 6, Mike Snook at 7. Steph Osman Wigan at 8. Luca Petrosi comes in for him to make his book Super Rugby debut at 9. Will Flynn moves to fly half at 10. Will Partington keep me on him at 11. Charlie Dunbar 12, Craig Duncan 13, Hanny Close 14 and Jack London is 15. Leeds Beckett side, eight of these set of 15 make their debut in Box Super Rugby. We begin with Ryan Everly, one, Hadi Newborn, two, and Xavier Valentine. All three of them, front rowers, all played last season. Adrian Warren, four, Stuart Snell, five, Johan Visser at six, Tristan Lloyd, seven, Toby Francis, eight. Connor Lloyd is the man at number nine. Sam Fox is the fly half at 10. Dan Leek, 11, Harry Collier, 12, Dan Kelly, 13, Harry Robinson on the wing at 14, and Sam Allen is the fullback at 15. And we are underway, right on cue. That's not the start that Leeds Beckett will be looking for. Losing 14 for 14 in the Bucks Super Rugby season last year. And starting as they mean to go on this season. Hugo Southwell, former Scotland international, has enjoyed a long hot summer as well. Hugo, good evening. Good evening, Johnny. Yeah, good to be here. It's not the start, as you say, Leeds were expecting. You come away from home, you know, you've got to keep your account down. And right from the off, a flat kick, easy take in the bread basket, and it's gone down. So great attacking platform for Bath uh, first up here. Luca Petrosi, Italy under 20s. Player that is going to be the man putting in the scrum. Anthony Woodthorpe, by the way, is our man in the middle. He's officiating this side between these two sides. Bath were successful against Leeds both times last season. 
picked up by Wigan at the back. And that one's got a bit loose. A little bit of a greasy surface here. We've had a lot of rain over the last couple of hours, since about half past four at least. And we've got a, a, an annoying breeze going from right to left as you look on the camera. And it's greasy surface, not the perfect conditions. You're going to expect one or two unforced errors. Yeah, you sort of feel just from those first two uh, uh, plays of the plays of game that it's going to come down to an error count, isn't it? Whoever can control the ball better, whoever can play the better territory in the right areas of the pitch. Uh, and that's going to be down to the nines and ten. We've spoken about uh, Bath uh, before the game uh, with their experience at nine and ten. You know, can they control it better than Leeds Beckham? That's what it will be about. Connor Lloyd with the put-in here at the scrub. Good scrum it is as well from both these sides. Bath putting the pressure against the lead scrum and it's picked up by Dan Kelly. Leads Beckett inside their own 22. And this is going to have to be launched downfield. Picked up by Will Partington. He takes it early. A low pass, though, to Jack London, who collects it well. Hardy close. Close. Ooh, thunderous tackle, my word. I think they could hear that one in shout. Never mind here in Bath. And it's a little bit high, and it will be Bath who will get the opening penalty. But what's interesting is both sides want to play rugby. You saw there from deep, Leeds Beckett trying to, trying to play, realised that they didn't, after a few phases, couldn't quite get anywhere, and then put the kick in. Great clearance kick and a quick play of the ball um, in, in from the touchline. So both sides looking to play rugby, which is exciting in these conditions. Well, Flynn moving to fly half with the, uh, the kick. Gets it up to the 22. We saw uh, Will Flynn, one of the best kicks we've seen on the old Bucks Super Rugby season last year when he had a, that late kick of a Durham for, went for Bath to take that game. Yeah, what a shock that was. You know, we expected Durham up there. The way that Bath played, we expected Durham to come away with that, but Will Flynn was influential. What, what to be interesting for me is his transition from 9 to 10. He's been playing the A-League with Bath Rugby, and, but at 9, what is he going to do for, for tonight in these conditions at, at 10 for the Bath University? He was very confident when I was chatting to him beforehand in the, uh, in the cafe a couple of hours ago. The, himself and Tom Doherty, who's on the bench today, I uh, said today on the bench, he's actually out injured, he's going to be back, he reckons, in about a month's time. Both those Bath players were influential with their season last year, but it's been turned over here by, by Leeds Beckett, but under pressure on their own try line. And that is a thunderous hit. Let it come now, Blue! No, still in. But still, Leeds retain possession with Lloyd. So much so. And they have to put it into touch and they have to put Bath under pressure with their own line out inside the 22. And this is exactly what the home side would have been looking for. Only four minutes in, Hugo. Yeah, great pressure there from Bath. You know, in these conditions, you've got to put a 10 under pressure when he's when he's clear on the clearance kick. And it's exactly what they did. They flew at him. They made him slice his kick. And it's given them again an opportunity uh, camped at the moment in this Leeds Beckett 22. George Frampton from the hockey finds his man. A short drive from the home side. And this is where they were the really back. strong last year. Yes, Sorry indeed. to butt in. They were driving line out last year was really strong. You can see right from the off, they're trying it again. Did they had only about five metres out now. And they do win another penalty. Good early pressure from the home side. Yeah, and you feel that exactly the same is going to happen now. Into the corner, five metre driving line out. They'll have a go again. And exactly what Will Flynn's doing now. Leads Beckett, no response to that, apart from pulling it down illegally, uh, correctly, as the referee called, and another chance here. These are the opportunities in these conditions you have to take. You know, you've got to make the most of it, especially this early in the game. Nine man. So Frampton from the line, one for one so far. Excellent take, and as you called, Hugo, here's the drive, plenty of men by, behind the ball for Bath, and here are they coming forward. Army of bodies as he creep over towards the try line and then over. Good start for Bath. The driving line out was an important weapon in their arsenal last season. And they've just shown once again why that is. Yeah, and it's a, it's a worrying sign that for, for Leeds Becky. If they can get the territory, if they can get the areas, the right areas of the pitch to play in with the likes of their, their 9 and 10, Petrosi and Will Flynn, they're going to prove all sorts of problems uh, for Leeds Beckett. And very, very easy for them in the end. Five metres out and a stroll over in the George Frampton's George the man who's got over his he's got three tries in Box Super Rugby 12 months ago or last season I should say and open to his account here in Bath on the opening game of this season 5-0 Bath lead and you always seem to see either the hooker or the seven come up with the ball this time it's George Frampton and I'm sure this is a picture we'll see throughout the season in the Bucks Super League 
especially with Bath Rugby, with Bath University. Flynn looking to add the extras. Right behind this, let's see. Steiner out on the left hand side, needed it to drift in a little, doesn't happen. Still five points to nil to the home side. Yeah, he sort of expected it. Will just Will Flynn just sent that out to the left upright, expected it just to fade in uh, with the win, but didn't quite, uh, maybe too good a strike almost. But uh, yeah, first blood to bar, 5 0, very important. You don't want to be chasing a game. For Leeds Beckett coming away from home, you do not want to be uh, too far down and having to chase a game. Sam Fox restarts the game, picked up by Charlie Dunbar. He collects it after this second attempt. Tackled by Johan Visser. Petrosi. Box kick downfield. A decent one it is as well, and gains about 40 yards from it. Leads up to take it quickly, but they're blocked. The exact start, though, Bath would have been looking for. Yeah, and you can see there, just that clearance kick, very, very oh, accurate man. from Petrosi. You talk about the exit play after you've just uh, scored a try. You don't want to be, okay, you know, initially Charlie Duncan knocked it knocked it back and they How lost 10 picks? or 15 yards. But then the kick from Petrosi just gets them out of trouble. That's exactly what you need from your, from your 9 and 10. Paddy Newborn played every game last year for Leeds Beckett. <laughs> <laughs> there was a man on, hook, on the uh, on hooker duty. And he's gone long. Not the start he would look for. Will Flynn picks up. Attacked by his opposite number, Sam Fox. Petruzzi. Deep kick downfield, and nobody's there to pick it up here. It's going to be on the bounce. And a little bit of football needed and by Sam Allen. Just lost at his second attempt as well, and could be in a little bit of danger here for Leeds Beckett. It's not the start that the Yorkshire University would have been looking for. Put under pressure. Right from the off, picked up by Visser. Box kick coming from Lloyd. It's a low one. And out the field as goes. One of the Leeds players is down currently, and they're already signaling to the bench. It's at his afternoon is already over. I'm trying to figure out who it is, in fact. It's... But it seems he jarred his knee and uh, the physio did signal to the bench the a replacement is needed. Yeah, and everything just not quite going for, for Leeds Becker at the moment, especially the kicking game. For me, the, Petrosi, Will Flynn, every kick they put in at the moment is, is finding turf. You know, Sam Allen there, the ball is very greasy. He's struggling on the deck. He's been... Uh, the kick chase is excellent. On the flip side with Leeds, they're putting put under pressure. Every time they kick, they're only making you know, 15, 20 yards. So really outstanding uh, kicking game at the moment from Bath. Mixed it up really well. So yes, we're all watch eight and a half minutes into this opening tie of Box Super Rugby. 2017-18. You mentioned when we were, you were chatting beforehand with uh, Joe at the, at our, in our pre-show that these two sides arguably may not be there towards the, the latter stages of the season. You're looking at your Exeter, your Harper, your Loughborough, but could you see a Bath maybe having a, a, a chance of maybe sneaking on that top four place? Yeah, I think it's it's about developing their game. Last year we saw um, a very forward orientated game. You know, we've just already seen the driving line out there. We need to see a more complete all round performance. You know, with Will Flynn at ten, is that what's going to make them tick? Um, you know, they've got big centres, they've got big ball carriers, but they need to bring the likes of Will Partington on the wing into the game. He's had experience with Bath Rugby already, and Andy Rock beforehand speaking uh, highly of him. So they need to get the balance of their game a bit more rounded. If they can do that, they will be a threat. Conrad Cade has come on the field for Xavier Valentine, who's the man who's gone off. Again, the Leeds drive with their number eight Wigan at the back, picked up by Jack Davis. And they're coming forward, creeping towards that try line, sniffing blood once more. Scott Russell. Steph Wigan stopped his tracks by Harry Newborn. Still with the home side. To the edge closer towards a second score. Hands up now. Also goes to his left. Stopped by his opposite number, Nell. Scramble leads the fence here to try and stop a second bath try. Sure. 
Ancient slowly closer and closer towards that trial line. Leeds needs to try and hold out here. Short, short. Down to the right hand side of the over this, uh, this time. No, they're not. Held up. Yeah, yeah, into line, yeah and I think it was Johan Visser there. Brilliant tackle. Just got on his back. Managed to hold, hold up uh, the Bath player there. And uh, he thought for love and money it was a, a certain score uh, to take it to 10 0. But they are playing the game. They're playing the conditions really well at the moment, Bath. Uh, and, and it's really it's difficult work in defence at the moment. So just absorbing the tackle rather than being able to be offensive uh, in the tackle leads Beckett. Well, usually you're trying for the conditions to your strength and you can see with the wind there you know it's, it's strengthening a little and it is in the bath side's face in, the bath in this first half yeah and that's making them have have to play uh, uh, quite a bit of rugby and you know that they're, they're, they're balancing it very well at the moment you know they've gone wide a few times they've taken a few quick line outs they've got their kicking game uh, well and they're playing the, the tight game very well as well so that's what i'm saying about this all-round performance and if they can get that right uh, it, it, for the duration of the season not just you know tonight because the conditions don't allow but it's for the duration of the season They'll, they'll be a force to be reckoned with. Petrosi with the putty. Five metre scrum for the University of Bath. The referee Anthony Woodthorpe wants to reset this one. Get your space. So then, take two. Crouch. Bind. Set. Trozzi with the put in this time. Steph Wickham picks up. Petrosi comes inside. Oh, oh darting rubber. The ball has got, got loose. Bath squandered the chance. Yeah, and that was our man, Will Parson, we just mentioned, bringing him into the game. Maybe not the, the, the exact uh, Charlie Dunbar running the dummy line and didn't really hell any defenders. So he's had a lot of work to do, Will Partington, but nearly broke the first tackle and Jesse went to reach out for the line. Uh, tried to use the conditions to his advantage to slide over, but just, <laughs> just popped out as he hit the deck. Uh, unfortunate, but that's exactly what we want to see from Will Partington. Get in the game and be just run at those midfield channels. Chance for Leeds to try and clear their lines here. The scrum just underneath their own posts. Crouch. So it's been one way traffic so far. <laughs> Once again, the scrum is going to have to be reset. Difficult conditions, though, here, Hugo. And you might expect to see this a lot tonight. Yeah, very difficult conditions. You know, I wouldn't want to be. I'm glad I'm not playing out there. Let's put it that way. It's, uh, <laughs> You've you seen many a game, played in many a game that's been like this. Yeah, well, definitely, yeah. But fullback's a nightmare. I mean, it really is uh, miserable out there. But uh, so far, you know, I like the way both, both players and, and teams have, have come into this, trying to play rugby. Um, you know, very, very difficult. But key moment in the game now. 5 0. Bath have wasted potentially a few opportunities in the last five minutes. Leeds need to change the momentum. At the moment, it's been all Bath. Leeds with the put in. Good scrum, it is as well. And they get the penalty from it. And good endeavour, good effort. And now they will definitely have the, they will clear their lines with this. Yeah, we talk about the momentum changing. It's little things in games. You know, I've played a lot of rugby and I know that just little things can change uh, the whole swing of the game very quickly. A good clearance kick here. Commentator's curse. No, it's, no, it's good. Yeah, it's good. very good. But, you know, little things like that can change the game. They're suddenly up to the halfway line. They've been under pressure for the last five or ten minutes. You know, this is their opportunity to, to, to get hold of the ball, keep it and go through the phases and get their game going. We haven't seen it so far. It's been 15 minutes and, and they have hardly had the ball. Harry Newborn with the line out. Collected by Francis. And now Bath on a, on a run, making some good lines as well. Picked up by Collier. Collier, kick in towards the corner. He goes out of play. A good endeavour, though, from the Yorkshire University. Well, that's what they could do. I mean, that is that's outstanding rugby. You know, first of all, the catch and pass at 10. The offload, hard line, again, another offload, and brilliant vision 
uh, and awareness and decision making to put that in and suddenly from nowhere five meter scrum penalty and we're five meters out from the bath line line out is taken and collected by bath it's the lead side that is celebrating They'll, have, they'll get the turnover here, That's exactly where they want to. You mentioned Hugo, just little little moments now and again, and the momentum can shift from one side of the field to the other. And, and it's one thing I noticed last year: you know, the university rugby, uh, very much so. The level is very good, but there's also moments in the game uh, where little lapses of concentration, little errors uh, from the opposing side, just bring teams back into it. No team is ever out of it, and we saw last year there were so many close fixtures, oh, indeed. Uh, so many games that, that went right to the wire. Leeds Beckett that quarter-final against Hartbury right to the wire and they're suddenly back in the game from nowhere they have been totally dominated for 15 minutes uh, and now they have a five meter they're gonna go for another scrum indeed why not you know after that last one where they dominated they, they're surely gonna go and, and really get you know, try and get a penalty try and get some points on the board uh, and get that, that scoreboard ticking it's a big learning process for Leeds back at University last year in the, in the opening season of this box super rugby no, they went to zero for 14 in the league, and then almost pulled off, pulled off the shock of the season, winning uh, against Harbury. What do you think Kenny Wood may have learned from last season's league, especially when he's starting from this season? Well, I think they've, first of all, they've recruited well. You know, you can't deny that. And that first 15 minutes didn't reflect what this Leeds Beckett side is about, this new Leeds Beckett side. Um, in terms of what he learnt, bit very difficult to, to learn anything apart from <laughs> the fact that we must we must start the season better. We must take every game as it comes. Um, especially when you go away to Bath. Oh, Long's in, he's in. Superb. Well, 15 minutes all Bath and then all of a sudden Leeds are on the scoreboard. And we talked about the class, uh, you know, and the class shone through, shone through there with Connor Lloyd. You know, he's been on the books of Scarlets last year. He's come into this Leeds Beckett side and he has done exactly what was needed there. He's taken the ball off the back of the scrum. He's threatened the line. He's, he's held it in two hands. So the defender's not quite sure he's going to pass or he's going to go himself. We see here on the highlights, just you know, real good awareness, good speed. The angle he runs to draw in the outdoor side defenders to get their eyes uh, is, is absolutely brilliant. And uh, a yeah, really good scrum again. But you see here as the ball comes out, just at the perfect time, he picks up, he sees the gap there. And you can see there, Charlie Dunbar, he's looking out at the, at the runners, the big runners coming in midfield. He sees him go, he turns his, turns his hips and, and there's Connor Lloyd straight through under the sticks. And from nowhere, they're seven five up. Indeed, they are. The extras have been slotted over by by Sam Fox. Five to Bath, seven to Leeds Beckett. Again, we talk about momentum changes, and we've seen it in Buck Super Rugby last season, and we've seen it at the start here. All Bath first fifteen minutes, but they're trailing. Yeah, and one thing to notice is how hard Bath had to work to get up in there, and you know, the tackle after tackle was made by Leeds Beckett. They were forced into having to, tr you know, go through. 10, 15 phases to score a try. How easy did that look uh, for Leeds Beckett? You know, a couple of kicks, you know, brilliant work in midfield, and then suddenly they're under the stick. So, you know, it just shows the class they do have if they can get possession of the ball. Knock on. Given Leeds with the put-in. <laughs> We mentioned, you know, we we'll, we'll saw sort of Bath in their driving line is their major weapon in their arsenal. It looks like the, the lead scrum could be theirs this season. Yeah, I mean, they've started the scrum both defensively and in, a, in an attacking sense. Their scrum's been uh, outstanding, and you know that's what you want. If, if there's going to be areas in a game, you're going to get a lot of scrums. You want to be dominating in that area. And we spoke about a lot before the game about this Bath halfback pair, but I've been really impressed so far uh, when they've had the ball uh, with both, you know, Connor Lloyd and, and Sam Fox. You know, so that battle for me tonight. We're only 20 minutes in, but that is going to be key to the outcome of this game. Great crowd we have here at the Sports Training Village here at the University of Bath. Plenty on the far side of the field, a lot on the balcony where we are. This year, the University of Bath very kindly have given us a commentary tent this year, Hugo. That we're, we're, we have been spoiled, haven't we? Yeah, th things have definitely <laughs> moved on a bit. It's, uh, it's nice to be un un under something, so uh, no, no, no drips down the back of the neck. How we've gone up in the world. <laughs> Halfway through this first half, Leeds Beckett lead by seven points to five with a scrum on their own 22. Connor Lloyd with the put in. And he also collects. Fox, left booted kick, remains in field. Picked up by Harry Close. This is Jack London. London out wide. 
to Will Partington. He could be a danger man. Stopped by Dan Kelly. Bath up to halfway. Petrosi. Petrosi surveys his options and is going to go with the box kick. That goes high above the floodlights. Nearly a good take from Dan Lake. But the ball did go backwards. And the away side gained possession. Harry Collier leads Beckett veteran. Lloyd. Bath coming for numbers on this near side. Got one or two gaps beginning to open up. Ryan Everly gains a couple of yards. Good tackle there from Steph Wigan. But Leeds are now the side on the front foot. Johan Visser. This is Conrad Cade now getting into the bath half. Lloyd again sells a dummy and now he's he's on the move. Little chip forward towards the corner. And this could be a second least try if they've got on oh. just just goes out of play and Bath can breathe again but great Leeds endeavour and they can be dangerous on this counter attack I tell you what I'm loving Connor Lloyd at the moment he's attacking the line he's, he's a real threat every time he gets the ball he's pulling defenders in and then he's threatening and then he's going and he's, he's got the ability to just burst through the line we saw here that is a you know with the wind it's unlucky it's just gone out into touch but the perfect option and uh, every time he gets his hands on the ball, he, he's excited to watch. And it's, it's, it's looking like he's going to be a, a great player for this Leeds Beckett side this year. He could be a real pocket dynamo, couldn't he? Oh, no, that's a dangerous line out. And so much so, Leeds will have it. I'm, the endeavour that Leeds are showing at the moment just to play in these conditions. Kerry Wood mentioned it before the before the game, but they are, they are sticking to their word. And you know, even in midfield, there, Johan Visser, the, the tip on in midfield to his fellow uh, forward who, who bursts through the middle. You know, really dynamic, exciting rugby in these conditions. But we can't underestimate it. I mean, it is. You know, it's a terrible night for for, for rugby, and uh, they're really. We've really had it worse. We have had it worse. You go. You know, let's be Cardiff frank. We, 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 we in Cardiff <laughs> on St David's Day. It was. Yeah, <laughs> it was a monsoon that we were stuck in there. Yeah. Crouch. Luckily, we're uh, we're only in September, so the pitch is in good nick. So. <laughs> now, to be honest, this is a danger weapon for for Leeds Beckett. This scrum. But conceded, and a short time penalty given Bathsway, and they'll have a chance to clear from what four or five meters out. Yeah, it's unfortunate there. You could just see the ball came out. Um, been given a free kick against Connor Lloyd there. He just kicked the ball back into the scrum. Yeah. If it had come out, they would have reset the scrum and they would have had another opportunity. But unfortunately, uh, just instinctively kicked it back in. But they've missed touch. They have missed touch indeed. Will Flynn has missed his target. Instead, the counter attack is coming from Dan Leek. Leads back inside the bath half. Jan Visser. Lloyd goes to his right hand side. Uses Harry Newborn. Off me now, Blue! Lloyd. Leeds Beckett just gaining the yards, gaining more and more territory. Stuart now. Ball spills out. But Lloyd is the man who collects. Tries to go for a little chip and chase, but comes to no avail. And now Bath have it, but a good tackle there from Stewart now once more. Petrosi for Bath. Picks up, collected by Ben Gasson. Petrosi, Will Flynn. Low one, it's not going to go into touch. Instead, it comes off the boot of Sam Allen. And Allen keeps in, not the best pass in the world, but still leads have possession and hoofed downfield. And it's a good kick it is as well. Deep downwind and goes into touch. <laughs> and we talked about the territory, we talked about playing the right areas of the pitch. Yes, they've got the wind, but that is Sam Cox again, just Sam Fox, sorry, just launching it down into the corner. Brilliant work under pressure. 
And they are certainly winning this key kicking battle at the moment. And another chance deep in this Bath half. You thought it was an opportunity for Bath just to put pressure on 10 minutes under the cosh, but Leeds came up with it there. George Frampton. Been under pressure a little. I think one or two of his recent lineouts from inside his own half. As you do this time, again, not the best. And picked up by Lloyd. And Lee smell blood once more. Tristan Lloyd this time. From one Lloyd to another. Connor Lloyd. Francis. Not this time. And Petrosi has to clear. And this should find touch. And Bath gets to breathe again. But Leeds, for the first 15 minutes, well, we're, we're still a little bit asleep. They've woken up with abundance, haven't they? Yeah, and Connor Lloyd is running the show. Just that Tristan Lloyd giving it to the big guy, noticing his decision-making at the moment is outstanding. You know, when he takes the ball to line, he realises when it's on to give it to that big forward to power through the middle, or when it's on for him to have a go himself. And, you know, unfortunately there, Tristan Lloyd just got stripped in the tackle by uh, Petrosi, and, and he managed to clear his lines. But at the moment, we said all, after the first 15 minutes, it was all Bath. It is all Leeds at the moment. It's relentless. Harry Newborn. Looking to find his man. Goes long. Risky, but still found the man at the back. Connor Lloyd. Gaffed to open up here in this uh, Leeds defence. Ryan Everly's gained a, a good 10 metres from it. Picked up by Harry Robinson. Connor Lloyd. Short pass. Lloyd once more uses Harry Newborn, the hooker. Connor Lloyd looking to go himself and inside, trying a little round the back pass, but it went forward and it will be Bath will have the put in. This, this uh, young Connor Lloyd is a man who's got a box of tricks, isn't he? Yeah, and difficult option there in these conditions, but uh, you could see what he was trying to do every time. They now they're now having to double up on him. You know, he's the threat. They're thinking he's going to going to make the break, so he's pulling the defenders onto him and creating space space either side of him. So a good option, but difficult to, to difficult to pull off in these conditions. So as we approach the half hour mark and this opening tie of the Box Super Rugby season for 2017-18. Crouch. Five. Another scrum being reset. From our referee, Anthony Woodfork. One thing I would say is 15 minutes into the game, it, it took Leeds uh, to sort of almost get off the bus. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, they've got the win, so they've got to make the most of it. It is a strong wind. You know, you feel that Bath... It's strengthened, it, especially in the last 30, 40 minutes, Yeah, it? and you feel it's at least a 10-point wind. Um, yes, Leeds will still play rugby. It suits their game, actually, to play into the wind in the second half. But you still feel they've got to get another score ahead just to give themselves that cushion. Picked up by Steph Wigan. Will Flynn finds touch and leads. Will have possession from the line out just shy of the Bath 10 metre line. Yeah, a good strike there from Will Flynn. Exactly what he needed. Just, you know, they've been under the cosh. Just needed uh, just to settle the nerves, get the ball off the field, and just get give opportunity for these Bath forwards and all this Bath team to just regroup. Lead you must set before we go up, please. New ball. Goes long once more. To Conrad Cade. Not straight. And Bath will have possession. Yeah, there's one thing about being a fullback in these conditions. I don't think it's much better being a hooker. You know, that means <laughs> throwing into these throwing into the line out in these conditions, wind, rain. You've seen there quite a few go go awry and there, Harry Newborn. The same happening with him. Well, Conrad Cade was it who threw it in. <laughs> Petrosi. The man with the put in. Josie may look to collect himself and does so. 
high pass to Charlie Dunbar. Petrosi, Will Flynn, Flynn with the kick. It's low and it's kept in field and should be kicked, collected by Harry Robinson. Robinson against his opposite number. Harry close. Bath penalty. Is that not rolling away? And you're not sure about that one? Ah, uh, yeah, I was going to say, it looked pretty unfortunate for Scott Russell there. He was on the ball very good, but he's, what he's saying is, is that uh, Harry Close hadn't rolled away. So it gave Scott Russell an opportunity to get on the ball. And, yeah, a good decision by the referee there. So Bath looking to gain some yards from this kick. Again, about a good 15, 20 metres. But you can see the strength of the wind, can't you? Yes, I mean, indeed. Even, even though it went out only 15, 20 minutes out, it's carried about 60 or 70. I mean, the wind is really strong and, you know, an opportunity again. How many players? You feel that it leads back here. If they keep hold of the ball, they've got such dangerous players all over the pitch. Even their forwards, they're all offering themselves around the corner. They're running hard. They've got the offload. They've got a lot game. of creativity, that seems, this season. Yeah, so if they go through the phase, if they get through five or six phases, you feel something's going to come from it. And uh, that's, an ex that's exciting to watch and exciting for the coaching staff. But they're putting it slide out right. <laughs> Leads keep possession. Connor Lloyd. Johan Visser. Bath calling for reinforcements on that far side. Lloyd is quick. Fox. Sackle! Justin Lloyd. On his opposite number, Mike Snook there with a great tackle, but Leeds still have possession. Johan Visser. Fox. Good pass, good collection from Harry Collier. Leeds continues to pick up and Conor Lloyd picks up once more. Johan Visser. Lloyd, Adrian Wadden, Lloyd, ball has come out loose, still collected by the number 10 Sam Fox, Lloyd, Harry Collier, Collier, what matter beats, Collier's going to go himself, great run from Harry Collier and he's over, superb start from Lee's Beckett's they have a seven-point lead. Absolutely outstanding work. You know, just held on to the ball. They weren't really going anywhere. I was, I was almost think to myself, they've just got to put in a little dink in behind, get that kick chase on and put Bath under pressure. But instead, they just went through the phases. Johan Visser offering himself at every opportunity. He probably had five or six touches uh, during that, that course of phases. And, and then a bit of class. We've talked about it. Harry Collier, just a serious turn of pace there in the outside channel. And you thought, talk about backing yourself. You know, if you see, smell the try line, just go for it. And he has just, as soon as he sees the opportunity here, you know, ball in two hands, he's threatened the defenders. He's, they think he's going to pass it, so they've stood off him. And then he's just gone for it and he's used his pace and a brilliant finish and an outstanding team try as well. Individual finish, but the build up to it was, you know, real class from this Leeds Beckett side. And is Connor Lloyd. He's going to try and add the extras here. Lloyd into the heart of the goal leads lead by nine yeah we talked about getting a score ahead didn't we just with that wind with the advantage that they've got and uh, you know they're really coming onto their game now Kerry Wood before the game said they were going to play rugby yeah. it's exactly what they've done when they've got hold of the ball when they've gone through the phases they've played some outstanding stuff and at 14-5 you know they fully deserve it after that appalling start to be where they are well, they're stuck on the M5 for uh, much of the uh, first 15 minutes, but since then, it's been all one-way traffic for the team in purple. Good tackle from Harry Close. Ball did pop out, but Leeds have retained possession. Harry Robinson was the man acting scrum half. Here's Connor Lloyd. Fox, left boot. Out into touch. And Kenny Woods applauding that kick as well. 
Yeah, what they're doing really well. I think well. he's been really happy from what he's seen so far. Yeah, he'd be absolutely delighted. I mean, apart from the first 15 minutes, you say, where well, they hardly got off the bus, they really have come onto their game now. 20 minutes of, you know, as good a rugby as you'll see at this level in these conditions. Really, really quality stuff, led by both uh, Connor Lloyd and, uh, and Sam Cox. So, you know, really, really exciting stuff uh, for, for, for those, for this Leeds Beckett side going forward into the league. Great start for them. Petrozic to Hadi Close. George Frampton. Tackle. Trozzi. Scott Russell. Trozzi. Charlie Dunbar. Charlie Dunbar now on the roof. Dunbar, one man to beat. It takes two men to get him down to stop that attack, but still the reinforcements come for Bath. Five metres out. To try and inch their way forward. Watch that they scored their first try. Jack Davis. Man picks up. Two, three metres out. Oh, lead, sure. Leeds trying to Let stop this Bath onslaught of momentum. Ball has popped out. Petrosi is the man who, who gets it with a juggling act and still keeps possession. He tries to go himself. Not one being called. The referee has stopped play. I think that might be see what he's given here maybe give somebody a talking to him, the looks of things yeah, i think he, i heard him during the play him say that can you stop talking to me i think will Brint's obviously giving him something in the ear <laughs> referee's not liking it and uh, to be fair you know good refereeing take him aside you know nothing uh, right. nothing untoward and an opportunity here for for, for bath right, a crucial stage of the game two minutes to go well will flynn's got the ball in hand the offside was what was given. So, right, the start of the half, we saw Bath, we saw Bath a little kick out, the, the corner, please. pick up and drive. Here's a try. We're ending this first half. No well, maybe we're ending this roughly how we started it. Yeah, you feel this, this. I mean, we talk about championship minutes in games and, and, and two minutes to go. You feel if, if Bath can sneak a score here, take it to 14 10, 14 12, what a result that would be. They've been totally outplayed. Yes, they had the, the best of the first 15, but in the last 20, you know, Leeds Beckett could have scored three or four tries. At how, how outstanding they've been. So, a key moment in the game here for Bath. Frampton. Good from the line. And now here comes the Exocet missile in the Bath Arsenal, driving forward towards the try line. The big heave is on. Bath are holding up well, but for how long? Army of bodies go down. Even the referee is struggling to find where that ball is, and so much so. He may have to stop play here so we can see where the ball is. Just chatting to his touch judge. And we'll have a scrum to reset the next play. And to be honest, that's the best result for Leeds Beckett. We've seen how strong their scrum's been in comparison to their line-out. Um, an opportunity here to disrupt this bar scrum. You know, still wind down the clock as well. 40 seconds to go. Key moment again. Uh, this as well. Momentum shifts. We've already mentioned it. Big moment here for Leeds Beckett's. So then, as we reach the dying embers of this first half. Same pictures as before, please. Balance. Petrosi. Italy under 20s, cap player, the man with the ball in hand. To give you an idea as well, for you watching at home. We go on the referee's whistle, our clock is only a rough indicator where we are in the game. So roughly maybe about a minute or so left to play in this first half. Good scrum coming here from the home side. 
Petrosi collects it. Harry close. Stop five meters out. Petrosi looks it for himself and he's over. Well, exactly what Rafa has been looking for as he puts the end of this first half. One scrum half a stone of the show for the wayside, but it takes the other one to get the home side back into it. Look at Petrosi is over and Bath are within four. Much like a carbon copy of Carl Lloyd's try for Leeds. Spotted the gap opening up. True scrum half style, smells blood. Over he goes to reduce the deficit to four, and Will Flynn has got a chip over here to reduce it to two as we approach half time. <laughs> and indeed, that is the case. So then we may have one more play here in this first half. Bath have reduced the deficit to just two points, but an enthralling first half. It's been taken quickly. So he's going to call the referee off guard. And a tough judge. That's going to be one more play indeed. Petrosi. Well, Flynn, and he's going to put this one into touch, heads it towards our commentary gantry, and that is the end of an enthralling first half here on the opening fixture of the box Super Rugby season. Two tries apiece, and at half-time, here at the Sports Training Village here at the University of Bath, the home side trial by two. It's Bath 12, Leeds Beckett 14. Yeah. Yeah. What a fascinating half of rugby. Uh, Bath came out of the box quicker than a juiced up Justin Gatlin, but Leeds, repel, Leeds Beckett repelled them, and then they've had Bath manacled in their own 22 for the majority of the game. And there's no handling issues out there, is there? Oh, it's a fair play to both teams. They've really gone and, and played a, a really attacking brand of rugby. And yeah, it's exciting stuff, isn't it? You know, Bath for the first 15 minutes completely dominated, played territory um, into the wind, which was a, a real challenge. But then Leeds Beckett. I mean, some of the rugby that Leeds Beckett played, yes, we've seen a forward game from Bath, but Leeds Beckett, a wide game, you know, they're nine. Connor Lloyd has been the pivot the whole game. He's been absolutely outstanding. And, and, and Sam Fox as well, just backing him up. The nine and ten for, for Leeds Beckett have, have been crucial. Uh, outstanding link players between forwards and backs. Yeah, you mentioned Conor Lloyd. He has been the feature of this half. I think that with the dominance that they've had, they'll be disappointed to go in only 14-12 up. But Conor Lloyd has been unmanageable. How are Bath going to mitigate the threat of him travelling from the base? Well, I think it's actually going to be harder in the second half for, for Bath because he, they're going to have to play rugby, even more rugby, because they're going to be into that strong win. So, you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a long, a lot of tackles, a lot of getting off the line as quick as possible and putting pressure on those two guys. At the moment, they're just giving him a bit, a bit too much time on the ball, and that's Conor Lloyd give him time on the ball he will threaten the line he'll take it right there he's got great vision he keeps square to the line and so anytime a defender drifts off him he just goes through the gap and his decision making at the line has been absolutely first class but that has also been complemented by the big fellas running lines for him to to feed the ball to like tristan lloyd the other the rest of the back row they're big number five god he's dynamic for a man his size they're giving him options everywhere. Yeah, for me, Tristan Lloyd and um, and uh, Johan Visser in the back row have been offering themselves every single opportunity around the fringes, just ball, ca ball carry after ball carry, and that's giving them the platform to play. It's giving Conor Lloyd uh, a, a retreating defence of Bath to attack the line, and Sam Fox as well to play at the line. I mean, it's been seriously impressive how even hands out, catching the ball, you know, I know you say it's a basic of rugby, but in these conditions, it's not easy, and to have the confidence to do that, it, it's creating space for the outside backs and you spoke about the territory game the tactical chess match if you will 
Lee's Beckett, of course, have the wind, but they have used it so, so well to pin Bath back in the 22. And really, they would feel that they should have more points from their territory dominance. Yeah, I guess it's frustrating that it's only 14-12. Uh, yes, just before half-time, you know, Petrosi, the other nine, who's actually impressed as well, in a, in a side that's um, played a very much forward-orientated game. You know, they've kicked to the corners, they've used their, their strength from last year, which was the driving line-out, to great effect. Um, but he, you know, spotted an opportunity They've taken their opportunities when they've been presented with them, especially uh, late on in the first half there. And I think the Bath will be the happier side. You know, Leeds, Leeds have had 25 minutes of complete dominance at, and have played some outstanding rugby, but they're only two points ahead and they're playing into a strong win now. So it's going to be an interesting second half. I think Bath are going to be stoked to come in to only two points down. When they turn down the shot of the sticks there, at the end, I thought it's a bit of a mistake, but Luca Petrosi managed to get himself across. Another name that we mentioned, 12-14. It just shows the mentality of both sides. You know, they don't go for the corner. Uh, sorry, they don't go for post. They go for the corner. You know, they trust their driving line out, which has been so strong for them. You know, this year, uh, so far in this first game, but also last year. Um, and you know. They've done what they've needed to. They've taken their opportunities. They're 14-12 down. They've got a big wind uh, behind them now. Can they improve their kicking game? Their kicking game wasn't great in that uh, sort of first 25 minutes. They came into it um, in the last stages of that half. But can they improve it uh, and, and sneak a win? But what a game so far. What a game. So we mentioned that fast start just before. We're going to see that first bath try, Hugo. Let's uh, talk us through how they got across the whitewash. Yeah, you just see, we talked about their strengths, you just don't want to go on about it too much, but they really are a forward or orientated side driving line out. And, you know, the first time uh, they tried to go over, they got tackled uh, illegally, uh, got taken down illegally by Leeds. They got another opportunity uh, and, and they don't, you know, two chances at this, they're going to score uh, more often than not as it just freezes there, but uh, <laughs> yeah. what, what then happens is a try was scored, yeah, but and, uh, and e of, easy work for them. And of course, there is a greedy hooker at the end of it, just snaffling up a cheap try. Yeah, George Frampton, you know, got an opportunity on the end of it. Uh, it's, it's normally either a seven uh, or, or a hooker that gets on the end of it. He got on the end of it this time, and I'm sure we'll see his name on the score sheet a few more times this year. But after this, Bath were right back down there. I thought the writing was on the wall for Leeds Beckett a little bit, but we mentioned his name a few times, giving him some wraps. Johan Visser holds the ball up, they win a penalty, they exit, and then it was all Leeds Beckett. Yeah, I spoke, you, you I spoke, spoke on commentary. You spoke about turning points, galvanising them. Yeah, and, and having uh, you know experienced the Bucks Super League last year in university rugby, there is momentum shifts throughout the whole game. No side is ever out of it. And we saw that with Leeds Beckett. You know, they held up on their line. And the turnaround, two phases later, the ball was in, on the five-metre line of Bath. And they had a line-out, an attacking line-out for Leeds Beckett. And uh, you know, they made the most of it. In the end, they came away with the try, and, and the game turned on its head just like that. And ever since then, apart from those last two minutes, they've been outstanding. Well, you mentioned the line out, and we've got to talk about set piece because Bath has been faltering. Their arrows aren't hitting the mark. They've had three given for not straight. They've been dominating the scrum a couple of times. That's got to be a big concern for Aaron James at half time. Yeah, well, we know that games are won on, on, a, on a platform, on a set piece platform, and, and, and error free rugby. You know, we saw quite a few errors early on. But since then, in these conditions, both sides have managed that pretty well. But as you say, the set piece on a whole is definitely uh, in Leeds' favour at the moment. And, uh, you know, they'll need that in the second half. Playing into a win, they'll need to keep hold of the ball, go through the phases, go through their patterns and use every sort of bit of ammunition they've got on this side. Well, from that pressure turnaround, we're going to take a look at your, your Bucks crush from uh, this first half of rugby, <laughs> Connor Lloyd's try. <laughs> Yeah, and what I like about this is, you know, the timing of picking the ball up. He just waits, he waits. You know, he's eventually, the, it's a stable scrum. Let's be honest, it's straight. It's exactly what he wants. And, and, and the back row are having to scrum here. So they're tied in. And he, just, just watch uh, the 12 for Bath. Um, as his, his eyes focus on the runners coming straight at him. And what that does is, is as he's coming, to, Connor, Connor Lloyd's running around the corner, the focus is on the outside runners, and he just goes through the hole, and it's brilliant vision. But that's replicating a lot of the magic he's doing from the base. He's running that J-line, he's got strong runners, options, and the defence are very flat-footed, and they don't really know which man to take. Yeah, but that is down to him really attacking the line. He, he's got to make that happen by attacking that space. If they drift off, he goes through the hole. If they come onto him, he puts one of his centres through the hole and it's that decision making in these conditions under pressure which has been outstanding from him. So where do we go from here for, for the second half? What, what, is each, what is each coach saying to their respective players to get them towards the W here? Well I think 
both sides have played as much as Bath have tried to t tried to play. It looks like they haven't quite got the team uh, and the and, and the uh, all-round ability that this Leeds Beckett side have got. Leeds Beckett all over the pitch have got guys that can make things happen. Bath are relying a bit more on their forwards and a bit more from their halfbacks. So for for me, it, it's they've got to play territory. Their game is a, a forward-orientated game. Yeah. They put the ball in the corners with Petrosia and Will Flynn, uh, and they will create opportunities for this big forward pack, drop, pick and goes, driving line outs to, to get ahead in the game. If they can get ahead in the game, it's going to put Leeds Beckett under a lot more pressure. That they're a better team. You know, yes, if they have to chase the game a bit, it's fine. But if they have 20 points behind, it's going to be a lot harder to chase the game. Yeah, I mean, you fear that Leeds Beckett can really counter from everywhere. I think that the we spoke about the kicking for territory, but Conor Lloyd again, he's not afraid to put the ball on the toe, stick it into the corner. They've almost got a wonder try in the right hand corner um, for like just really putting them under pressure making those big fellas turn around disorientating the defense it's good stuff from Leeds back then. yeah and again good options there he's made a break he's looked around he's seen he hasn't got the options either side of him so he's put the put the dink in and unfortunately the wind just took it over away from uh, his uh, his right winger but you know good options again a couple of opportunities where they, they could have scored more points um, but Bath had an opportunity too you know I think uh, Charlie Duncan uh, or Craig Duncan, I think it was, or Char Charlie yeah, Dunbar, storming run made a run. and he had he had a, he had the opportunity just to put a little pop pass on his outside, and, and he decided to hold on to it. So these little moments in games are crucial. As it as it happened, it didn't matter. They got the try near the end, but I think as we get into the latter stages of the second half, those little things are going to make a difference to who wins this game. Um, and then just a just a comment on on the event itself. It has been, the, the rain has been pretty biblical here today, but we've got about 500 people here. We've got the, the UBRFC stalwarts on the far line singing, singing their boys on. What, like, what a nice event for these, these guys to be involved in and putting on a show in Freshers Week. Yeah, I was, uh, to be honest, I was, I was surprised by how many people, <laughs> how many, many people rocked up at, at 5.30. We were sitting around going, uh, surely, surely people aren't going to make it out for this. But, you know, the, the crowd has been absolutely outstanding. They've been treated to some uh, a serious spectacle of rugby uh, for the first game in this Bucks uh, Super Rugby. 2018 and uh, long may it continue. I hope the season continues like this because the rugby has been brilliant. Amen, Hugo. So, do you think that the uh, the other the other sides in the competition are going to be watching this, thinking, do you know what? So uh, there's a new there's some new sheriffs in town. Well, I think what the sides will be watching is that you know suddenly the league is getting more competitive. We knew you know year one it might be sort of take a bit of time for, for teams to find their feet, but now. Uh, year two, it looks like the side, the whipping boys of last year, who lost all their games in the regular season, are, are really taking it to, to the other side. Bath, who, who qualified for the quarterfinals, so um, it, or for the semi-finals, so it's going to be. I think there's going to be less of a gap between these top eight teams this season, and, and that makes for an exciting league. Yeah, it makes for it makes for a mouth-watering league, mouth-watering season ahead. So just to f finish on Bath, what, which players need to put their hands up for you in this half? Well, uh, uh, we don't want to just, you know, sound like a broken record, but for me, you know, we know what the forwards are going to produce. We know, we know they've got that power game, but for me, it's about the halfbacks controlling it. They have to control it in the second half with the wind, play territory, and give those forwards exactly what they want. If they can do that, it's going to be hard work for Lee's Beckett. Good stuff. Okay, I think the teams are going to be due to be coming out, so I think you're going to have to head off uh, back to the crow's nest with Johnny to call the game. In fact, I can see Lee's Beckett coming out now. So, uh, while the inclement conditions robbed us of a cheerleader's performance at halftime, it certainly hasn't robbed us of a game here. Lee Beckett are throwing, right. throwing the now ball around. Do, Kerry, turn it off, yeah. and you're going to use it at the end of the game. Champagne. Yeah, They've sorry, sprayed yeah. it all over the pitch so far. Bath need to satisfy their crowd who are cheering them on vociferously, but they're currently two points down. Johnny, over to you to guide us through the second half. Joe, thank you. Superb stuff we have seen so far here at the sports training village. End to end stuff, you could argue, and an even ball game is keenly set up for this second half. Bath trail only by two. 12 points to 14 when we have seen so far in this opening tie of the Bucks Super Rugby season for 2017-18. As Leeds have made it out and they're already in the huddle, in the middle, we're still waiting for the Bath side to come out, and no doubt the men have been red a riot act or two at half time and here goes hot footed from the studio back into the commentary that's not a commentary box it's a commentary commentary palace that we've been given here at bath there have been two kinds of us haven't they um yeah. would that be right riot act at half time to bath 
Uh, I thought that would be too harsh. No, I think it would be a bit harsh. I think they uh, they had periods of the game, first 15 minutes and the last, obviously, yeah. two minutes where they've uh, they've managed to stay in the game. That's the that's the key thing. When, you, when you're playing with a win in the second half, just stay in the game. Give yourself an opportunity. And I think Aaron James will be the happier coach. You know, not because they're, they're behind, but because they're still in this game after a total uh, period of 20 minutes of domination from this Leeds Beckett side. But... I think this window actually suit Leeds Beckett. The fact they've got to play rugby into it and not kick too much will suit their game, suit the way they've played so far. But if we can have a second half as good as that first one, uh, I'm looking forward to it. You said golf analogy, it's about a one and a half club win, isn't it? Yeah, it probably is a one and a half club win. And, uh, you know, they'll have to make the most. You can't just expect things to happen by having the wind and, and, and turn everything into a kicking game. They've still got to play rugby, but they've got to dominate territory. And, and that's up to Petrosi and Will Flynn at halfback. At least the rain has relented, though. Yeah, the rain, the rain's relented, but the pitch is absolutely sodden. So uh, it's still, still going to prove difficult conditions. But I'm looking forward to it. I really enjoyed that first half. It was an enthralling first half as Leeds Beckett get it underway, and they, the ones who will win the line out right from the kickoff. Yeah, and exactly the start they wanted. An error of judgment there from Will Britton, uh, the captain. He went to think he could tap it down and. You know, in hindsight, probably should have left it. So first blood uh, to Leeds Beckett. Again, they need that territory. They play off a, off, off a platform 40, 50 metres out. They don't want to play too much rugby, um, but when the opportunity arises, they've got to make the most of it. Change of hooker for Leeds. Tui Nuku is the, the man now on hooker duty. And he's one from one from the line as we start. Involved maybe knock forward there. Indeed, that is the case. Sitting by a referee, Anthony Wood. Anthony Woodthorpe, the ball trickles out of play, and Bath have sent it into the Leeds half, and Leeds will have the line-out on the far side. Yeah, that's what's going to happen, you know, they've got an opportunity, Tristan Lloyd in midfield, uh, just passed slightly behind him uh, from Harry Collier, and, and he spilled it, and it's turned over, and... Craig Duncan just nudges it downfield. They always say turnover ball, either two passes or just get it into the space as the defence is, is disorganised, and it's exactly what he did. And just they've got to play this this territory game. That that's the way that Bath uh, University like to play. They've got the big forwards to to to, um, to make that happen if they get good line out ball. So key key moments in this game. Stuart now collects ball at the back with Conrad Cade as this drive has gained some yards from it and still continues to go now into the Bath half. Ball comes up loose though, and so much so it was knocked forward and Bath will have the putting. Just a little bit of a spillage out of Conrad Cade's arms to be knocked forward and Bath will have the scrum just inside their own half. But first score here you go, you'd argue vital. Yeah, first score is absolutely vital. You know, chasing the game for, for, for Leeds at the moment. They're 14-12 up. They've, they've got to protect that lead, but they've got to get the scoreboard ticking over. You get the scoreboard ticking over, anyone chasing the game, irrespective of whether you've got the win, you know, it's, it's a hard ask in, in, in this, these conditions. So key, key stages is, is getting that next score. Five, set. Petrosi with the put in. And collects, put under pressure by his opposite number. But comes out of that with flying colours. Charlie Dunbar. Tackle. Towards the halfway line. Advantage. Advantage being played and the penalty conceded. By this. One thing I will say though for that first half, you go comparing the amount of bad conditions that we do have here in Bath, there wasn't that many penalties conceded. No, there wasn't that many penalties. Good discipline was good. Yeah, really good discipline. And I think again, you know, when you've you're playing into the wind, you don't want to concede too many penalties. For, for Will Flynn, he was a good kicker, a good line kicker. You know, you expect to make sort of 40, 40 metres here. You know, suddenly 15, 20 metres out, it gives them a real opportunity and uh, they've got to keep their discipline leads. That's part of the part of the game plan, I'm sure they would have said. As they went to the sheds at half-time. Up towards the leads, 22. You can see there, just not rolling away. No attempt at all to get away from the ball and uh, the referee spot on there. Picked up by Will Britton, the Bath captain from the line. And now, you can see how dangerous Bath have been plenty of times with this drive. And continues to go, continues to come at the back with Jack Davis. And continues to nudge their way forward. Now five metres out. And they continue to come forward. Bath need to try and stop this in this tracks here. Or they could be in trouble at the start of this second half. 
They're down. Are they over? They are. Army of bodies for a superb celebration. All the same, and Bath are back in the game with number six, Jack Davis. Yeah, Jack Davis was the guy who got his hands on the ball early on in, the, in that play there, and the driving more. And again, so dangerous. When they get in that position, that all came from the penalty on halfway line, 40, 50 metre kick to, the, to 20 metres out from Will Flynn, and the rest is uh, history. They're just brilliant uh, in the driving line out part of the game. And it's an area where we, you know, they've got to be so disciplined, Leeds Beckett. They can't afford to give away anything inside their own half. All from the line out just shy of the 22. And now Bath leads 17 14. Will Flynn's over this downwind around 20 yards out. And this to add the extras to give Bath a five point lead. <laughs> Flynn, centre on its way and into the heart of the goal. First goal vital, it goes to the home side, they lead by five. It's 19 points to 14, they lead. Yeah, and I was going to say, Will Flynn, before he kicked that, it's a crucial kick. These sort of, you know, two pointers, just nudging it further and further ahead, making Leeds Beckett chase the game. Not just a penalty in it, but now a try. A uh, crucial kick from Will Flynn there, just to take it out to five points. Ball goes out of play. Goes out on the fall and back we go to halfway. Yeah, again, just an unforced error. That's where something's crept into the first. It seems like they're following the, the same trends from the first 15 minutes of the first half and, and not really being at the races. And it's something that needs to change very quickly because if Will Britton had left that first one uh, off the kickoff straight at the second half, it would have gone out on the full as well. So poor start from, uh, from, from Sam Fox. Scrum on the halfway line. Five-point game. Still plenty of time, though, for the Leeds to get back into this game, and we saw how dangerous they can be in that first half. Last season's basement dwellers in the box of Super Rugby. Zero for 14 in games. But this season, in the postseason especially, they've regrouped, they've recruited well, and now they're trying to be a force in this season's box of Super Rugby. Yeah, I think what's interesting, as you say, they've recruited well. Uh, they've got some some experienced players that have played their first year of university rugby, but they're sort of mid twenties, late twenties. Mm -hmm. That's key to you need experience uh, to come out a lot, uh, over a long season and get that consistency of performance. And uh, I do feel, irrespective of this result today, we're seeing a Leeds Beckett side that's going to compete this year. And that's uh, you know that's not yes they competed. The, the scores weren't massive last year, um, but. They weren't consistent enough, and I, and I feel this year they will be. Petrosi with the put in on halfway. Picked up by number eight, Steph Wigan. Will Flynn. Little kick on this greasy service. Picked up by Sam Allen, who recovers up the second time of asking. Box kick is going to creep out, and a good kick it is from the fullback. And taken so, quickly. Taken quickly, though, by Jack London. Will Flynn with a right boot this time. Spots a little bit of a gap opening up. And Hardy Robinson does collect, and now they're off and running once more. This leads time, we know how dangerous they can be on the counter attack. We saw that during the first half. Good contest that picked up by Connor Lloyd. Lloyd to Sam Fox. Lloyd. <laughs> Penalty given. And is this in kicking range, do you feel, Hugo? It's a tempter. Yeah, I think that probably is. And I, you sort of feel that they've got to take their opportunity. I, I, let's see what the decision is here. Yeah, it looks like they might be going for the three points, which is uh, understandable. You know, they've been under the cosh. You feel like they've got to keep it ticking over into the wind, get it back to two points. Back to two points, anything can happen. Well, absolutely. We have a great contest here on our hands. This first tie of the 2017-18 season. Connor Lloyd, who's been a right true pocket dynamo for Leeds Beckett. And this to reduce the deficit to just two points.
punched it through into the heart of the goal. Two point game. Bath to lead, 19 points to 17. Yeah, and exactly what they needed. You know, being first 10 minutes of the second half again, like the first half, very poor. This leads back inside, and it's, it's really swung in roundabouts. But to get the points on the board, to get back into that again, to where we started the second half, a you know, crucial, crucial moment there from, uh, from Connor Lloyd. Well, Flynn restarts. Downwind, well taken though by Dan Leek. Lloyd. Fox sliced off his boot. Not going to gain much distance from this, but it needs to be a good take. Ball goes backwards though, and it's a lead possession. Fox at the second time of asking. This time does gain some ground. Into his opposite number, Will Flynn. Flynn to his left hand side. Now he uses Will Partington. Partington tries to pirouette on a sixpence. Goes to ground. Petrosi. Will Flynn. Flynn into midfield. Does gain a good 20 feet. Petrosi, box kick. Under pressure. That may go out the fall, and indeed it does. Yeah, control there. You sort of Petrosi looked up. He didn't really have options. It was calls from the crowd there to Will Flynn. When he got went round the back, they had space out. Just give that extra pass. That's where this Bath game just needs to just move on it and move on it. With Leeds Beckett, they would have passed. They would have given that second pass, got it into the outside channel, and given their speedsters an opportunity. But you know, for me, they ran out of options there. And Petrosi, yes, bad execution, but probably the right option. Ryan Everly gives to Inuku the call. Well taken in the Leeds line. The drive comes forward from Leeds, but it is held up by a bath wall and as they're trying to pop out sideways now. But all of a sudden they're on the run. Johan Visser. To Inuku. Lloyd turned over. Will Flynn spots space to kick downfield and is picked up by Dan Leak. Leak, plenty of men over to his left hand side and uses Allen. This is Dan Kelly. Connor Lloyd. Kelly Wood watches on anxiously, but Bath are the ones who will win the penalty. Seems Sam Allen was down to the ground and holding on just a little bit too long. Yeah, and two brilliant turnovers. We had one down here, uh, went deep in uh, the Bath half from, from Mike Snook, and that one there from uh, Scott Russell. Two huge moments uh, there in the game you know they tried to run from deep didn't quite this is where they have to get their game management right it was so good at times in the first half but they haven't gone anywhere they've gone through the phases you know then just get it down there put pressure on get your kick chase up and say to bath you know you've got to do something from 60 70 meters if you get caught in these positions and get penalized easy shots at goal and opportunities to kick to the corner uh, for this driving line out this powerful weapon of bath universities indeed it is Jump you see there, just handing out some bottles. That's Tom Doty. He's uh, one of the leading try scorers for Bath last season. He's currently coming back from injury. He reckons he'll be back in about a month or so's time. We're back here in three weeks' time, in fact. We're at the wreck when Bath host Loughborough, and there should be a good crowd for that one. Yeah, that'll be an exciting game. You know, we've seen games before at the wreck. I think Bath leads Beckett last year, five and a half thousand um, at the wreck. <laughs> Indeed, so. it was a replay of this game, but but uh, thankfully we don't have the fog that we had last year. There was uh, there seemed to, we let the John Carpenter film the fog. It just came out of nowhere. You know. <laughs> But uh, no, that'll be a good game to look forward to. Uh, I think everyone will be, uh, you know, if Bath can get the result, get a few players back, get the result tonight, get players back, you know, it'll be, uh, it'll be a good start for them. They'll be looking forward to that one. Indeed, but they're on the road the next two games. Next week, they're away to yeah, Dunham, and the week after, they go into the Principality to play Cardiff. Yeah, so two, uh, two trips that will be tough, tough for them. And yeah, it's all about starting. This tournament is all about that momentum. We talked about it in a, in a game, just a one-off game, but we talk about it across the season as well. And if, if teams can start well, uh, it will be crucial to, to the way they develop as a squad going forward. Will Britain collects with the line-out 
This is where Bath have been dangerous. Just trying to sneak another try over the line. Bradley Packham oh. on the field. He's moved. About two metres short. Hands up, 17, 17. Driving over. They're going to once more. Good resolute leads defence, but for how long? How long? Army of bodies there celebrating. Bath. But instead, goes the other way. Yeah, you can see the Leeds Beckett's players calling to the referee more and more. He hadn't actually called it himself, but they made up the decision for oh, him. And just a little a bit of afters now. You can see the frustrations boiling over, and I think that stemmed from the fact that the Leeds Beckett forwards broke up the driving line out. For the first time, it, it, it broke up, and that was that mass massively in their favour. It meant that they had to pick and go, didn't have uh, that momentum going forward, and uh, in the end, they all got underneath the ball and held it up, and it was a, it was a maul. You can see there, the ball's above the ground, and a turnover and an opportunity here. It's still difficult from here into the wind, but an opportunity for the likes of uh, Connor Lloyd and Sam Fox to clear their lines. That's indeed what they'll be looking for. We've got, what, 26 or so minutes left to go. Just to remind you, Bucks is back on Friday night. We're going to go to Nottingham for the first time, the newly promoted side. Hugo's going to be there for that one, as, as is Joe. Yeah, and having watched Nottingham last year in that game at uh, Cardiff, Cardiff where, where, we, where we were soaked. Yeah, they, <laughs> still in those conditions. In those conditions, despite, I mean, it was a lot worse than this. We were knee deep in mud. Um, but they, they had something about them, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how they'll progress in this league. It's a, it's a huge step up for them, but they showed some real uh, signs last year that they're, they're a force to be reckoned with going forward. Yeah, Scott Evans is going to be in the chair in the commentary box for that one, as he is next week when Loughborough hosts Harbury, which will be a, a fantastic tie. That one as well, seven nights from tonight. Just to remind you, if you're in London, by the way, Roslyn Park on the 13th of October, Durham play Exeter, and we want a big crowd there for that one. Plenty of alumni from both of them universities, no doubt. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's it's going to be a big game. You know, both teams, quality sides, as you say, a lot of alumni in London. Hopefully, uh, uh, the word will get out that it's happening uh, down at Roslyn Park, and we can get a big crowd there. So. Anyone listening, anyone watching, get yourself down there. And indeed, three weeks from tonight, we're back here when, uh, not here at this, but we're at the wreck for when Bath host Loughborough. Set. So that's all the corporate stuff done. Back to the rugby. Connor Lloyd. With the putting. <laughs> Leeds penalty, and they are absolutely thrilled with their efforts. Yeah, exactly what they wanted, just an easy out, you know, one thing having to pass the ball back to Sam Fox to clear from deep with an on-rushing defence, now he's got a free opportunity uh, to make touch, don't try and be too, uh, you know, ballsy here, just get it out and reset and, and get, your, get your patterns going again. Kick downfield is pretty decent as well, the touch judge, in fact, hardly moved. And now leads up to halfway. Yeah, and that's a great kick. I mean, he's, I said, don't be too ballsy. He's maximised every little last inch uh, to get it up to halfway line. And you know, this is where they've got to be smart now. They've been under the cosh. Don't try and play too much rugby. Just get themselves back into the game. It's still a two-point game, but they have to play in the right areas of the pitch and, and down in this bath half. We haven't seen that probably for the last ten minutes. Twenty-five minutes to go. New coup. Finds Adrian Wadden. No change! And Leeds trying to play part of their own game here. He's always found in. Again, a couple of yards, but now stopped in their tracks. Lloyd. Bit of a gap opening up here, and Leeds are, are on the warpath here. Robinson into the 22. Sam Elliott, 22 now on the field. The referee stops. But good attacking line there from Leeds Beckett. Yeah, and frustrating. Ball, ball knocked on, and still we have a two point game. Yeah, so frustrating. I was about to uh, give Sam Fox huge raps for, uh, for the passing and his handling skills. Every time he takes the ball, he takes the ball out in front of him. But there, he just faltered as he went to pass that short ball just in behind uh, his forward, Tristan Lloyd there. 
and, uh, and they, they knocked it on. You just feel that if they go through the phases, this leads back inside. If they can get through four, five or six phases, they're going to cause this bar to fence all sorts of problems and they're breaking them at times at will. But just going back to Sam Fox, what I like about him is he's giving his outside back so much time on the ball by taking the ball out in front of him. You know, you see so too often in these conditions, guys, take it on their chest, nervous about dropping the ball. He's certainly not that. It's exciting to see. Connor Lloyd's gone off the field. Number 22, James Elliott, to beg your pardon. I said it was Sam Elliott before. It's James, to beg your pardon. He's now on the, on the field. Ball! And Moore's been caught by a referee here. And he's take it to ground. The referee's got the whistle to his mouth, and it will be leaved with the putting. It's amazing, isn't it, how this game changes? You know, we've just seen total dominance from Bath for the first 15 minutes of the second half. It's exactly the same pattern as we saw in the first half. And now suddenly, a bit of a sniff, a bit of a line break from 40, 50 metres out. And, and, and Leeds get the confidence again. They've turned it over, held them up, and uh, what an attacking platform here. Both op options on both sides with the guys they've got out wide. You can see there, just got on the right side of the ball. Numbers got numbers in there and uh, you know, give themselves options here. Harry Collier looking like he's uh, pretty enthusiastic, enthusiastic outside on the left there, outside Sam Fox. We saw the try score in that first half. He's uh, an obvious choice to go to off this, uh, off this right hand scrum. So then it's been their major strength in the first half, in the first hour of this game, in fact, as this leads scrum. They have an attacking one inside the bar 22. Pretty good again. Pretty good again. Right at the back with Johnny Teague. Penalty. And maybe a card, Hugo signalling the card in his hand here. No, I'm signalling post. Oh, you're signalling post? <laughs> I, thought, I thought you had your hand up like this next to me. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no we don't do that as rugby players. No, no, I'm, no, I'm thinking, right, just get yourself, you've been out of the game, 1917, three points, get it to 2019, and just get yourself in the lead. You know, it puts a different perspective, but it looks as if the referee's marking out another scrum. Yeah, they're going down again. You know, they've got the confidence, they've got the dominance in the scrum. They obviously feel that while they're in the ascendancy, they've got to make more uh, more of it than just three points. It's 20 minutes to play. It's funny the psyche, isn't it, in rugby? You, you know, you've had a kick 35 metres out and you've gone for post. You're now pretty much in, in front of the sticks, 10 metres out, and you go for a scrum. You know, this is, <laughs> this is where they believe they're at at this moment in time. And they have to make the most of it if you're going to if you're going to make a decision like this at this time of the game two points behind you have to make the most of it they've still got time on their hands though they have still got time on their hands but they've they won't get many opportunities like this um, and they've, they've decided to go for it they obviously have confidence that they can drive this potentially over you know they're 10 15 minutes out but we saw how far that last scrum went again a good scrum coming from lead refuge of the whistle and he's going to reset this one for me, the way the scrum's going, for me, the Bath, Bath uh, prop there stood up, you know, just because he knows he's under pressure. He knows that he's been driven back 10 metres in the last scrum. It'll be interesting to see what happens if, that ha if, if it happens again, because he said that they both stood up at the same time. For me, Bath popped up first. Just to remind you as well, we've got the hashtag in the corner of your screen. Box Super Rugby, get in touch. Join the conversation on Twitter. reset once more so another minute or so being eaten up here while this one restarts so referee giving both packs their instructions here we've had a couple of resets and this is now the third time of asking on this Leeds penalty. 
This is where the, this is where the referees are put under pressure. You know, this is where they get paid the, paid the bucks. You know, with Tony Spreadbury behind us here, ex referee, watching on. Big decisions here. If uh, if, if the scrum goes down or they stand up again. Picked up by James Elliott. And now they're coming for the corner. It's going to be a, a, a good score. Great tackle it was indeed, in fact, on Sam Allen. And I think the referee and touch are just having a little chat here. A try is scored. <laughs> Leagues have taken the lead. It was spotted by our touch judge on the far side. And Sam Allen may have got over. And now the Yorkshire University have the lead. Yeah, and as he made that outside break, you thought it was harder for him not to score. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's, he's done brilliantly well, uh, Sam Allen. But Petrosi as well, you've got to give him credit. He tried to get under the ball. I think it was Petrosi, but here he just got on the outside. Jamie Elliott there. But look at that last ditch tackle. That oh, was the number six, Jack Davis. Jack Davis, great work from the back of the scrum there to get back uh, and, and almost hold him up. But in the end, it's a try for Sam Allen and exactly what they needed. We said they had to make the most of it. And that's exactly what they've done. Indeed. Three points now. The advantage to the away side. And now the number 12, Paddy Collier, is now on kicking duty. Left boot. This to extend it to five points. Into the heart. A superb oh. kick. Just yeah. got over, though. What a kick. That is, uh, you know... Into the wind as well, Hugo. Straight it's... into the teeth of the wind. And, you know, a good side for a left-footed kicker. But still, what a street, sweet strike. He couldn't have struck that much better. And, yes, it, it might be there's still a long way to go in the game. But that is, a, you know, five points. Seven points is much better than five. Sounds obvious. But taking them just that extra score ahead. So Leeds, Beckett now lead by 24 points to 19. Box kick. Downfield, hands up in the wind. Oh, a little bit of a... What? I tell you what, Steph Wiggins did well there. Miscommunication between two of the Bath players on the home side to still keep possession, but sometimes when things aren't going your way, that's what happens. Nice inside pass from Dan Wheatley. I well, spotted a knock on here, and uh, that is definitely the case. Hugo spotted that one from up here. And the Leeds side, they're celebrating like they just scored a try. They're sensing something here, Hugo. Yeah, you can see it in their team. It's got it's, it's spreading across the across the whole side and the energy and the enthusiasm every time they get a turnover, every time they go up in defense and make a big offensive hit. You know, it's great to see and it just shows what the confidence does you know a try like they just scored just gives them all a bit of a lift and they certainly needed it from where they were at the start of the second half so roughly 15 minutes left to play leads with the scrum crouch Leeds, 15 minutes away from their first ever win in Box Super Rugby. They didn't score a win all last season. And right now, everything's going their way. Everything is going their way. And, and just like we saw with Bath in the first half and, and into the second half with their driving line out, that is their go-to at the moment. The go-to with Leeds Beckett is their scrum. Any time is an error. They're absolutely dominating. And, and Bath are having to concede a penalty. They're either having to pop up, they're having to go down. And it's a, it's a real strength at the moment for Leeds Beckett. Fox left boot. Will it going to go out? It does. Will Parkinson try to save it from going out? Leaping like a salmon to try and do that, but alas, his endeavours come up short. It certainly wasn't his purest strike, Sam Fox. No, indeed of the day. not. But but. But the result is, the result is, is spot on. It's, it's around five metres out line out. And this is exactly where they want to be playing. You know, 14 minutes to go. They have to be playing deep in this Bath side. Just keep the ball, make Bath, force Bath into making errors, conceding penalties. Yes. 
not what they were looking for. Picked up by Jordi Den Hartog, but unforced error from the home side. And it's those opportunities, they've got the ball back, don't compound it with an error yourself, and that's exactly what they've done. They almost needed there. They've got everyone's up in defence. All the Leeds Beckett's players are up, getting ready for the attack that they would have had if they'd won the line out. Just get it down there. You've got the win, get it down. They get a chase on. You're going to get a line out probably 40 metres out because they're going to have to kick it back out. That is where key moments, decision making comes into it. And, and for me there, uh, someone had to step up and take that take that on. And as a right bonus, look what Leeds have got now inside the bathroom only two. Yeah, and again, they've made an error, but they've got the ball back. Um, and you know, hopefully they've learned from it this time. They get an opportunity to build phases now, just keep hold of the ball. Nothing fancy, but it's also another scrum. You know, it's exactly what Bath don't want. So roughly 12 and a half minutes left to play. In this opening game of the season. And Leeds can really put a lot, so much effort into the next 12 or so minutes because they have a fell week next week. They don't have a game. As we have nine teams in the box Super Rugby this season, one team will have a week off. And Leeds are the one, lucky ones next week. So they can really put everything on the line here, Hugo, for the next 12 minutes or so, knowing that they've got 14 days rest. Yeah, it makes a big difference. You know, you've got a great anything that goes wrong, anything that goes right. You can you can put right the bad stuff. You can uh, work on the good stuff and, and, and really look at your next opposition as well. Spend a lot of time analysing uh, their next opposition. They've got a Nottingham in two weeks' time. Yeah, which, again, the, the new boys to the talk, to the competition as well. So it's, it's, it's a crucial. If they can get this result today, it'll be massive for their season. Yeah, Leeds will go away to Nottingham, then they host Durham on the 18th, and then Loughborough on the 25th. All of October. And right now, they could be sensing their first victory in Boxing Robbie out wide! Uh, the Dan Lake just over the top of him. If he caught it, he could have been in. But again, this is what we talk about. You know, you've made Jamie Elliott's there, made a little snipe round the side. Does he need to throw that? He only needs to throw that if the, if, if the winger, if Leek is guaranteed to score. He certainly wasn't guaranteed to score. Just take it in, build the phases and put Bath under pressure and force them into conceding another penalty and another scrum opportunity. Unfortunately, these, these little decisions at the moment are, are affecting both sides and not quite taking them uh, to, the, to, to the position where they can comfortably win the game. One or two men just down... Right now, I think it's one of the uh, one of the Leeds players just receiving some treatment at the moment. So we're going to have a little break in play here as the rain, the, the drizzle, comes back here in North East Somerset. But the crowd's still in good voice. One or two been sampling the, uh, uh, the the local water by the sound of it as well. <laughs> You have to give credit to the crowd as well. I mean, we, on a night, on a <laughs> yeah. night like this, we've had we have had worse nights in our first season. As I said, we were in, in Cardiff on St David's Day last year, and it was a, a, a monsoon of of, a, of proportions where we were we were ankle deep in mud trying to traipse to the commentary box. It was a, I was very thankful having the golf waterproofs in the car that day. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't the nicest day, but uh, still tonight, you know, driving wind and rain. This is a day at the beach compared to that night. The crowd are out, the crowd are out in their force, and they've, uh, they're definitely being made to, made to be heard. Ten minutes to go. Bath have possession. Looking to clear their lines. Flynn, from inside, his own try line. Spins out, and it will be Leeds who will have the line out just inside. Just outside, I should say. The Bath 22. If you can see there's a newfound urgency in everything that Leeds Beckett are doing at the moment. The, the kick chase there, as soon as it went back to Will Flynn, he was under pressure. He could only get, I mean, he's got the win, but he only got 20 metres on it. So, you know, Leeds Beckett are just camping themselves down in this half. You feel at the moment that something's got to give. You know, the 24-19, if they can get this next score, I feel that'll be enough for them. And uh, that's why uh, they're putting so much into it. You can sense that they feel that as well. Goes long, drills it long. Too long, though. Backwards off black. Backwards off black, said our, our referee. So Leeds still have possession. Johnny Teague picks up. Always backwards, always backwards. Still go, ball goes backwards. Fox with the left boot just slides into touch. I think right now for Leeds Beckett, anyone will do. Yeah, that's, that's probably his only option. You know, they kept on going backwards, kept on, you know, 
no one really wanted to take the initiative and take it forward. They have little offloads. They've just got to get themselves back in, in the game where they just keep hold of the ball. And uh, as you say, Sam Fox, no other option uh, but to just nudge it down there and just, just tick down the clock. You know, it's taken another minute out of the game by getting it off the pitch. Hardy Collier just receiving some treatments on the field right now. There you go. A little rub of the back and he's back on the field. And that's all is the ball. Bart have it at the back with Jack Davis. Yeah, what Leeds Beckett won't want to do here is concede a penalty, and they already have. There we go. Gives them an opportunity now, Bath, to just nudge it into the corner, and we know how strong they are from there. Indeed they are. Penalty advantage. Penalty advantage. Our referee, he's going to blow a whistle, but yeah. there, indeed he does. And back they go. And what they'll be hoping now, Leeds Beckett, is that Will Flynn doesn't take off uh, or takes off more than he can chew, and it either goes dead or uh, not so... Uh, not as good a kick as, as they would hope because he's got a little bit of an angle he has got an angle and if he can put this 10 meters out you fear for Leeds Beckett that's exactly what he's done it's a brilliant kick superb kick from Will Flint and he has put it seven eight meters out and as you can guess what Bath are going to do here catch drive uh, key moment for Geordie Hartog here he's come on he's replaced George Frampton the try scorer this is, he will want to hit his man, which he's done. He's gone to two, he's gone the easy throw, and they've got Britain a roll on again. Drive it like coming forward for Bath, yeah. the hub side of the over. They're celebrating. The referee may have to fish this one out to see it, and he does so. And we said exactly that. They did not want to concede a penalty anywhere inside their own half. It just becomes too easy for Bath. I mean, they almost walked over, ran over the line there. I think it's Will Britton is the man who collected the line out and eventually got over the line. Captain's performance. Exactly that. Captain's performance. Him and Scott Russell in the second row have been outstanding tonight. You know, when they've needed to be, when they've needed to take the opportunities from this driving line out. You see how easy that was. It was almost as if there was nothing up against them. And what a kick this now is for Will Flynn. Oh, indeed. He has got the wind at his back. So this is in reachable distance. 24 apiece we are right now six minutes left to play Flynn with a right with his right boot looking to take the lead <laughs> He's got definitely got the distance as he got the line the crowd will tell you he has So then in this seesaw battle on the opening game of the Buck Super Rugby it's now Bath who have the lead by two, 26 points to 24. And only two or three minutes ago, we were talking about if Leeds Beckett just can get that other next score, they've won the game. Suddenly, Bath are in the lead again. You know, it's that weapon again, that driving line out. I still feel six minutes to go. There's something else, something else to give in this game. Which way is it going to go? Well, Bath won't want to concede a penalty inside their own 22 here. One score, the difference. We are truly have a grandstand finish in our opening game. <laughs> Box kick from Charlie Bennett from Louis Mulholland and Derek Pan. He's now on the field. Dan Leek. James Elliott now. Bath gone from reinforcements on that far side. Elliott. Fox. Collier. Ball comes out loose. And it will be Bath who will have the put in. Four and a half to play, two points to the lead. You've got to give uh, Leeds Beckett credit. They are just playing right till the end, still trying to get the ball in those outside channels, use the likes of Collier uh, and Sam Allen just to attack the space there. Just slightly unfortunately, got his hands free in the tackle, but just couldn't quite get the ball away uh, in the bread basket to Sam Allen. But uh, they really are playing right to the death. One thing we can say, Hugo, with a lot of confidence this year, that Leeds Beckett will not go to zero for 14 this season. They certainly won't go zero for 14, and in better conditions, you, you really fear for some of the other teams against them. They like, they're playing some great rugby, um, irrespective of, of, of what we've seen tonight and the conditions. They've really tried to play rugby. They've tried to play from deep. They've got exciting players all over the pitch, and they've got options all over the pitch, you know, whether it's Visser in the back row, who's, who's a real ball player, but is great around the fringes as well. 
or the scrum, great platform. And then you've got the likes of Collier, Sam Allen, Sam Fox, um, really exciting uh, group of players that the Leeds Beckett have put together this year. Just the player seeing some treatment right now. Four minutes or so left to play. Been enthralling. Yeah, whoever wins this game is going to take uh, you know take a lot out of it. I mean, both sides will take a lot out of it. You know, away from home for Leeds Beckett, they've, they've shown glimpses of how good they can be, and it's something it's, it, it's a lot to build on. But for Bath, I feel they'll definitely, uh, if they win this. You know, they will be absolutely delighted because they've done it the hard way, okay, um, but they've done it with, uh, with their powerful weapon. They know it's there. It's about developing no, their game, but right. it's a lot easier right. to develop your game when you've won. Yes. Been a knock on. Blue scrum. Four minutes to go. Scrum down inside the bath half. Oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you can't be there. You must be as a flanker. You must be bound there. Sorry, I thought you meant as an eight. <laughs> yeah, but he can't be there as well. Yeah, you can be there, but he can't be there. Thank you. Well, our referee telling us that's <laughs> why we, we can't start that. that that's Grum. But Leeds won't mind that. that that's, well, say Bath won't mind that. That's wasted 30 seconds or so. Three and a half to go. Point! <laughs> you must allow him to bind you go over the top, please. Okay? Three minutes left to play. Bath haven't been too sweet at the scrum during this game, but right now they won't mind eating up the clock here. No, and I think uh, you know Leeds have got to put everything they've got into the scrum. We've seen what they're like uh, when they've got attacking scrums, but defensively, we've got to see the same again. They Crouch. need to turn this over. They need to get a penalty. Fine. Um, with with so little time left on the clock. They're going down. That will be reset. So another minute to be eaten up. Exactly what the home side will be looking for right now. Yeah, this is a, it's a tough situation for the referee because you've seen all night the Leeds Beckett have been in the ascendancy, but it's an attacking ball for Bar, so he's got to keep his nerve here. Just give an idea as well. Our clock's only an approximation. We did go on the referee's whistle. There might be a little bit more, could be a little bit less than what you see right now in our graphic. Ball put in by Louis Moore Holland. Comes out of play to Will Flynn. Little chip forward. There is a man back for Leeds. Right into the bread basket. It goes. Who launches the kick back? Will Flynn is there to cover. Fl and Flynn calls for the mark. Clever. Yeah, very good covering there from, from Will Flynn. Right option uh, to put it back down there. Just had to find grass. Had to put Will Flynn under pressure. Now he's got a dead ball situation. You expect him from this, from this angle to make 40 or 50 metres. And he keeps the ball in play. Or maybe just sliced out. It did. Good kick from Will Flynn. Up towards the Leeds 22. And they have to find a score with 90 seconds to play from deep inside their own half. Yeah, and it's going to be difficult. You know, Will Flynn did exactly what was required of him there. He just filtered back into position uh, at full back, took the mark. Very, very clever. And now has put it 50, 60 metres down the pitch. A big ask now uh, for Leeds Beckett. A little conference there with the forwards. They're going to need to come up with something special. We've seen it from their players, so it could be another twist in this game, but it's, it's a big ask from 75, 80 metres. We're still, this game is still in the balance. Anything can happen, but Hugo, give me an idea of who you think the man of the match could be. There's plenty of contenders. Yeah, I mean, I, I think both second rows uh, for, for Bath, both Will Britton, the captain, he's led by example, um, and Scott Russell as well. You know, the half-backs have done well. Here we go. They're off and running. They're off and running indeed. But the ball was forward. The ball was forward for Dan Leek. That, what a call that is. It's come from the touch judge. The touch judge has called it and wow, he was away and he's actually, he's got round his opposing winger here. It looked like he was in. That could have been game set match. We said they'd have to do something special. And they very nearly did it. But as it is, you'd expect Bath now with what we see on the clock, 30 seconds, under 30 seconds to go, then to play out the game here. Here we go, is the replay. Let's have a look. Probably diff difficult to tell from this angle, but... Oh, <laughs> that's... 
That's a, that's a big call, but he's, the touch judge has called it. Let's see where his hands are going. That's normally a, a telltale sign. Oh, that's harsh. That's harsh. For me, that's harsh. It looks like it's, uh, his hands are going backwards. If anything, it's, 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 on the, it's, it's dead straight. It's parallel. I think uh, he's, he's got away with one there. Or Bath have got away with one. So, uh, your man of the match? Yeah, I would say, you know, the way they've scored their tries, very much a forward orientated game. Will Britton, he's led by example. Jack Davis has been good in the back row. Uh, Mike Snoop, good with the turnover. But for me, you know, Will Britton, Will Britton in the second row. Um, he's led by example uh, and, and he's led his pack very, very well. Mulholland. Picked up by Jack Davis. Penalty to Leeds. They still have time. There's Will Britton, number four of these. Hugo Southall's man of the match. But Leeds have possession. You hear the referee saying there, there's still time to play the line out. So this is their one last chance. You know, the the last roll of the dice. Just to, just to give viewers the reason, you know, giving Will Britton, there's been some outstanding performances on the Leeds Beckett side. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, but obviously, 26 24 at the moment. The Bath, <laughs> Bath, Bath, as we thought, going to be the victors. But Leeds Beckett, you, you could name you know, a handful of players uh, that have been you know, put in some quality performances in the backs. You know, Sam Fox, Coll Harry Collier, Sam Allen. Uh, you know, and Connor Lloyd as well, Tristan Lloyd at, at seven. You know, there's been some great performances, and uh, they'll be a force to be reckoned with this side. Don't change your mind, 15. Now move. Leeds have possession, and they have a penalty advantage. My word. Uh, They've got to go for it. They've got, They've to, go got for to go for it. You would have thought. 21, you mean? What 21. a chance. Yeah. This, yes, they are, they are already signaling to the post well. 21 side entry. All or nothing. 21 side entry. Louis Moore Holland, that's what they, it's been conceded for. Yeah. Oh, they've got time for the corner. Well, just well, said, they, well so. they're going to go for the corner instead. They still have time. Just, our clock's only a rough indicator. That ball is into the 22. Well, just before we were saying. Maybe you've gone beyond the front man. That leads up with one more last roll of the dice while they've had a stay of execution and all of a sudden they may pip, Lee, pip Bath on the line here. And you have to say this is fitting of how the game has been. You know, it's swung to and fro from Bath to Leeds Beckett and right to the death. You know, 26-24, both sides have got an opportunity. Both sides have got a chance of winning the game and it's been a great advert for this Buck Super League first up. Exactly. We've got many, many more to come over the next few months. Great line from Tui Nuku. Finds his man. Now the drive coming forward. Bath even remain resolute if they want to try and take this game. They're already appealing to the referee, but Leeds are driving forward. Continuing to come forward. They may sneak this at the death. Now going to ground. Picked up by an advantage being played as well. You have to think they haven't got time to go to the corner, so they've got to go quickly, probably. Shift drive there, but you've collapsed it. Now what? Now what are your options, boys? Scrum. Scrum. <laughs> oh, oh. Well. Scrum what, what do they have left in the locker? Well, what a fitting end this would be. You know, we've seen the dominance they've got in the scrum. Here is an opportunity to be a hero. Five metres out, exactly what you want as a front row. I have a feeling this will not be coming much further than the number eight's feet. Nope. We kept in there. Keep your eye on Toby Francis, yeah. Going for that push over try. Yeah, 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 well, the man acting at number eight right now, Johnny Teague. Let's go. What a grandstand finish we have here on this opening game of the Buck Super Rugby season. Really is on a knife edge. All on this now. The big weapon of the lead, Arsenal, the scrum. They've been dominant all game. Crouch. One more major effort, and they may pick up maximum points here in Bath. Yeah, we were speaking to Kerry Wood before the game. You know, long pre-season, ten weeks they had. This is what it boils down to. You know, the 85th minute of a game, last play of the game, mentally and physically. 
can they sneak this win? What a start it would be for them after last year's exploits or non-exploits. Oh, well, indeed. Teague, James Elliott there as well. Still, they continue to come forward, and another referee's got his arm out again. Kicks out, back for another penalty, and there's a man going to be spending the rest of this game off the field. They'll be down to 14. Well, 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 well. Number seven gone in. Mike Snook. He finishes the game on the sidelines so then one man advantage another scrum coming with now we estimate six minutes over and the referee is, he's, we've talked about him holding his nerve in certain positions well they are totally dominant in the scrum this if this happens you know how many times is he going to let it uh, penalties occur before he gives a penalty try what a big call massive call Stay connected, forward, Eagle. Stay in the contest. Left of the language, please. Yeah, apologies if you heard anything on the referee's microphone there, but you can understand Crouch. the emotions right now. Bind. Set. Here we go. Leeds may be their last roll of the dice. Looking for an advantage to come here. And that one's going to be well, spotted by a touch judge. He's, he is on his spotted infringement. Replay again to Leeds. Oh. Plenty of. Encouragement coming from the Leeds Beckett fullbacks. From Harry Collier there to the all the forwards. One last effort, boys. Crouch. Bye. Set. Penalty again. Now then, the referee may be losing his patience here with the, with these bath forwards. He's not. Time off. Oh, well, maybe. What's he, what's he deciding here? You need discipline the scrum now. Okay, discipline front row at the scrum. He's just... again. Scrum. He may be giving Bath here their final warning. Again. Maybe giving Bath their final warning here. He said discipline the front, the front row. That's what he said. <laughs> I feel the fact uh, that they blew Crouch. up. They blew up there. The referee blew up. Actually Bye. blocked Bath because it didn't show that they were so much in the ascendancy on the second time. I feel they've got probably another time to go down. Unless they're pushing forward like they are now. Johnny Teague. Another one. No, this this will be the last one, definitely. Next one, it's a penalty try under the sticks. And another one's going in the bench. 19. 19. Dead in Jones of Bath. He now ends the game on the sideline. 15 versus 13. And you, you're saying this is their last last life. I'd be absolutely amazed um, having had two guys simping. If the next one, you know, you could see there, they've got the shove on. The last one was a penalty just for it collapsing uh, at, at Putin. Let's listen to what he's saying. We might be able to get a bit of an okay. indication. Yeah, that's no, a fair point. You can see here in the no, no, replay, they get a shift on. Jobs, okay? By getting that shift on, that's put the, the referee in a position where the next one, I believe he will give a penalty try, and that is that would be game over. And I can't, to be honest, see any other uh, result at the moment. The way they are dominating the scrum, I think there's only one outcome. 
One last hurrah. Do Bath have anything left in the locker? Well, another benefit as well is with the new rules, that they have to reset. Even if it collapses and he doesn't give a penalty, they have to reset uh, now. They have to play uh, and keep playing until they get a result out of the scrum. So that suits Leeds Beckett in this situation hugely. Scrum. Right now, massive favourites are the away side to take this. And we play what we feel is 90 minutes now of rugby. I seem to recall a Six Nations game happening in the centre front. It was 20 minutes over earlier this season. I don't think they'll be competing with this. <laughs> I, I feel that this is this is it. This is the last scrum. Here we go. All on this. Crowley. Elliot with the ball in hand. He'll have the put in. Here's a great view. Set. Here we go. Keep my eye on the referee. It's good. It's a good scrum though from Bath. They've held it on res resolutely. Teak still with it though at the back. Oh. Yes, good day. Still with Leeds possession. Remember, they've got a two man advantage. Bath have hung on by their fingertips, but for how long? Release him, 16! Johnny T. Just been held up. Trying to stay under the post now. Bath with a two man disadvantage. Still picked up now by Elliot. Elliot, they've got men over into the corner. Just shy of the line. Johnny T is the man going to be picking it up. He does, decides to go for himself. This Bath defence remaining resolute. How much patience do Lee's Becker have? Nuku. Teague. A man to collect. Picked up by Jack Johan Visser. Advantage. Advantage being played. Sack not rolling away, just shy of that line, still with that two-man advantage. Fox, gone wide, but they're going to come back to this penalty regardless. And now, yeah. another scrum. No, 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 I'm seeing a man running out with a tee here. Surely, surely, this is close enough to kick. Yeah, you would have thought so. They've got to go for the points now, after all those scrums. You know, the ironic thing was, the referee was about to go under the sticks. He had actually started making movements. If, if the number eight was at Toby Francis, uh, if he had left the ball in there, they would have got a penalty try. Instead, he decided to pick it up, and just at that moment, the, <laughs> the advantage and the, and the opportunity for the penalty try Where went. So, the the luckily line. for them, after that resolute bath defence, they've got another opportunity here. And gee, Harry Collier, after that last kick we saw, you would uh, you would bet it, bet your money on him getting this. All on Collier with his left boot. This to win the game. Collier for the win. He's got it. And Leeds Beckett, after heartache, after heartache, after heartache last season, finally their first win at Box Super Rugby has come 13 minutes over. They have taken the University of Bath on the line. They've won it by a nose, by a point. They've taken the victory here by 27 points to 26. Breathless stuff and a fantastic advert for Box Super Rugby. Wonderful, wonderful stuff and plenty for Joe and Hugo to talk about. I've got to, uh, like I'm supposed to be. A dramatic finish and what an advert for Buck Super Rugby in the season ahead. We spoke of Leeds Beckett's heartbreak <laughs> last season losing 14 of 14 but finally they get a taste of sweet victory in what was an absolutely extraordinary game and finish to the match.
it was a it was a game where the score yo-yoed, the dominance yo-yoed. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit speechless. Here you go. I have to say, 53 points in those conditions and a game of that quality, you've got to take your hat off to both sides. Very different sides. Both played outstanding rugby at times, but in very different ways. You can see there in the bar circle, they are absolutely distraught. They had this, the game snatched away from them. But at the end there, you've got to say that the team that really went out there and really took the game in diff difficult conditions, they played a forward orientated game, Bath, but Leeds Beckett, some of their rugby in, in patches was absolutely outstanding. It was, it was a game of first half on boomerang a little bit. Um, Bath came out flying again in the second half, just like the first. They got the ascendancy and then a big Leeds Beckett set got them up there into a winning position. And from that point, they smelt blood. I thought they'd close the game out. Bath came back for more and their persistence and their heart to continue battering away there. They finally got, a, they finally got the pen. Yeah, well, you've got to be that sort of side. I, I was saying on commentary, 10 weeks of pre-season, physically, emotionally, gets you in a position like that to win big games in tight situations. And that's exactly what they've done. They've never given up. They've gone, you know, right to the end. And, and, and you just have to give credit to them. Both teams were, were, were brilliant tonight in different parts of the game. But for me, Leeds Beckett just had a bit more about them, a bit more creativity, a bit more flair. Uh, and what a start to this league. Mate, it was a game of big plays executed by boys with big balls, I'd say. I mean, uh, when Flynn ping, pinned it into the corner for Bar to get their catch and drive, it was Henry Slade-esque from the semi-final in the Prem last year. I thought that was the match winner. And then Collier steps up, puts it through the post. And I'm amazed he was there to actually put it through the place because he was in the forward pack half the time slapping asses and, and getting the boys all revved up when they were trying to drive across the line. Yeah, and you've got to give him huge credit tonight, Harry Collier. You know, his try was outstanding when he went 40 metres out. Brilliant break, brilliant finish. And then he, he, he came into the game, you know, didn't start the goal kicking, took it over, nailed one from the touchline, nailed the penalty to win, two contrasting kicks but he didn't put a foot wrong tonight. And that's the sort of players they'll need tonight to build on their season. Bath had, had their 16th man in the crowd here tonight, who were absolutely amazing. The, the rain was sleeting across, they were uncovered, and they are in full voice all night. However, one thing that was you know, evidently notable was the Leeds-Beckett bench was so whipped up for every decision, like absolutely revved up. They were living and breathing every second of that game and every decision that went with their way. Yeah, and they got confidence from, from, from their aspects of the game that just, you know, they, were, they, they played some, some such good rugby in, in patches, but when they got that moment and that momentum of, of, of 10 minutes or 15 minutes of brilliant rugby, you could see the energy in the whole side lift, the bench lift, the coaches lift. And it just showed where they're going to, I feel, where they're going to go this year. I think there's so much more of this side, this lead side, that we're going to see this season. And you put them on a dry day, they could be pretty scary. Well said, well said. Right, well, we're going to throw it down to Johnny, who's pitch side. Uh, he's going to be speaking to the, win well, the coaches and well, the man of the match, Will Britton, who I'm sure that well, the expression to feel like you've kissed your sister is never applied uh, so well. Um, Johnny, down there with uh, some of the players, sir. So then, Tristan, how was that? <laughs> uh, have you got any more words to describe after all that effort? I'm not 94 minutes worth of rugby. Have you got anything, anything left in the tank? I'm looking forward to a little sleep on the bus back, to be honest. But um, uh, right, look, the boys did fantastically well. Like, it was, it was looking like the game got away from us at the end, but before the game, we talked about discipline, aggression, and accuracy. I think the first half that we saw let ourselves down in those departments, but I think we went, played tonight five minutes at the end, and uh, those there, all three of theirs show at the end there, weren't they? Well, an absolutely breathless game. Seesaw battle went one way, went the other, went one way. What was the mindset of you and your side, especially when you were you went down those last ten minutes? Um, we always knew we were within seven points, so we always knew we had a chance, you know. If we, we knew the conditions and stuff, we could get down and bat half, hold a territory, hold, keep hold of the ball in their half. We knew we had a chance to sort of creep over the line. Uh, we had the dominance in the, in the moment, we got that going once we sort of hit a line out. And the scrum, obviously, once after the first sort of ten minutes, we, we dominated in the scrum. So that sort of kept us in the game, to be honest. I front row did fantastically well today. Just tell me, how much confidence are you going to now take? Ben, man, you've got a week off next week as well, so you've got plenty of time to rest. But how much confidence are you going to now take from this victory to all the rest of the Super Rugby sides you're going to take on this season? Uh, well, it's well documented our troubles last year. Um, so obviously, to get a win under our belts is massive. 
uh, we can sort of build on that. We've got, we actually have a week off, we've got Varsity next week, so uh, it's hopefully building another win and get the confidence back up again. It's winning is a habit at the end of the day, so if we can keep winning, keep chugging along, then uh, we'll be happy. Fantastic, happy days indeed. Congratulations. Well done, Tristan. Let's bring in the winning coach, Kenny. There's a rueful smile across your face. Bear in mind that last year it was disappointment after disappointment after dis disappointment. Tell me what the taste of victory tastes like. Uh, hasn't really sunk in yet, to be honest. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know, uh, you know, as we said before, we've worked really hard over, the, over the preseason, and um, you know, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a special win for us because you know what happened last year, and it's it's a new group, really. You know what I mean. There's there's a lot of guys, but there's a lot of new guys as well. So, it feels quite funny at the minute, but uh, we'll we'll see. Um, three hours and back into the bus trip home, I think it'll be pretty good. Is that a testament to the morale of your side that they bonded so quickly to produce this result? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's probably a good way to put it. I'd, I'd, I'd say our, our, um, our hard work on the field, on the training field, um, the sports science involved from Leeds Beckett University with uh, you know John Week, Jonathan Weekly, who's a, a strength and conditioning coach, um, you know, and the support network and staff network around there is, plays a big part, and especially go to 94 minutes or 92 minutes, whatever it was. You know what I mean? I, I knew we had had it in the tank, so um, you know, it's credit to to all the support stuff that we've got at Leeds Pickett University. So that me and Hugo did spot during in the game. Is this your dominance at the scrum? Is that something that you can be taking a lot more this season than something that all the other sides should be keep kept aware of? Um, our scrum's weaker than it was last year. Really? So, yeah. Yeah, and that's honest truth, you know, and. Uh, you know, it was it was good. It was good today, uh, but certainly, you know, we can get better in all facets of the game. You know, we'll we'll break this day, game down. We'll have a look. We'll uh, dust ourselves off. Enjoy tonight. Enjoy the win. Um, but certainly, on uh, come come Friday, we'll review the game and we'll go through those processes and make sure that we get better for the week after. Finally, confidence. It'll be sky high now after this. But bear in mind, a week off from Super Rugby, but a varsity game next week. You, your guys will, will be buzzing heading into that. Yeah, they will. Yeah, yeah. It's um, you know, I'm looking forward to the varsity game. You know, it's a special occasion for for both Leeds of and 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 uh, Leeds Beckett. And um, you know, like you know, we'll, we'll go out there and give it a good shot. And uh, as I said, we'll stick to our processes and build every week. You know, we've got games right up until December. So bring it on. Bring it on, indeed. Many, many congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Caddy. Let's bring in Aaron. <laughs> Well, I don't know what words I could say to you after, after that one. One way, then the other, then the other. It was a great advert for this form of the game, but you must be disappointed to be pipped on the line. Yeah, we're disappointed to be pipped on the line, but then, you know, they, the, the boys summed it up themselves. It was it was down to what they thought it was themselves a bit, you know, discipline. Uh, Leeds have always had a good scrum, you know. Um, whether they whether they were bottom of the table, they turned a lot of scrums over last year. And we knew that. Um, and we showed that. So, you know, there was just some things that we gave them, those scrums in the areas that we were a wee bit disappointed at. Um, and, yeah, disappointed in their discipline because that was one of our key things. And that any positives, though, you can take out of the game? I oh, look, look, the way we worked and uh, together was really good. You know, we... we I think we scored four tries. You know, I know they weren't weren't pretty, but they come from penalties themselves, and we worked hard to get those. And uh, yeah, there, there's a hell of a lot of positives around the work because we got that close. You know, it was within a minute of, of of us winning, and we'd be talking a different story. But looking forward to on the next couple of games coming forward. You're gonna, you're gonna wait a couple of times, and you're back not here, but at the wreck in three weeks' time. The game's gonna start coming thick, thick and fast, and it's only gonna be a matter of time before you guys choke up the first victory. Oh, this is a brilliant, brilliant league, and we're gonna be prepared for it. We knew they were coming. We knew the fixture list. You know, we're going to Durham, um, but we had some success up there the last two of the games. So, yeah, we seem to have, unfortunately, for a crowd, but a better away form than than home form that we're hoping to change. But look, you know, we, we you know, the old cliches are dust themselves off. We're to get on a scrum machine um, we're going to just look at the video about where our discipline were and how we changed that and there's quite fixable things it's a big long league um, you know there's the, I, it, it's changed there's there's no games you sort of can pick off and say that's a must win anymore they're they're as hard as hell which is which was brilliant and uh, it, it, this this league's moving on even further this year it's a marathon not a sprint commiserations today thank you So there you go, Joe. Leeds nice Beckett nice take story. it by one. Nice Stunning stuff. Nice to hear those thoughts of, uh, of both coaches there. Um, so, Bath, we'll, we'll start with them. 
they they got their act together in that half. Um, their line speed improved. They started to manage that area around the breakdown a lot better. They got a lot of purchase and a bit of ascendancy, and that's what gave them the front foot. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I think, I mean, Bath will be disappointed. Let's talk about the end result. They've lost the game. They, they, they were there. They had it. In, in, they, they had it in both hands. Um, you know, for me, I said it through commentary, it frustrates me that they haven't got more to their game. They haven't developed more to their game in the off-season. You know, we saw last year, very strong, very powerful, with a driving line out, big set of forwards, very good pick and go around the fringes. But it's all quite narrow. There's not much width to their game. They rely on Will passing turn off, broken play, just to make things happen. He's probably the one guy that potentially can th make things happen. Other than that, uh, you know, they're nine and ten of uh, building a partnership. But for me, they need to expand their game. They need to look at this lead side and go, yeah, dude, that's that's how we want to develop. That's how we want to play. And you know, who would have thought we'd be saying that yeah. with what we saw last year from Leeds Beckett? Do you think that that, is it, that Leeds Beckett star, that's the star that's going to win the league this year? Definitely. I mean, if they can keep up that level of performance and just take it you know, up a notch um, or, or, or get it consistent across the whole 80 minutes. We saw 40 minutes in, in bits and you know, fits and starts that were very, very good. But they need to get that consistency against the better sides, against Loughborough, Hartbury, Exeter. They won't get the respite they got tonight against Bath because Bath couldn't cope um, with what they threw at them. But... The better sides, defensively, they will have they'll be tested a lot more, and we'll need to see a, a step up from Leeds Beckett to take it forward into more uh, challenging for the league. Yeah, so as galling as it is for Bath, they're going to be on the back foot. They've got some tricky fixtures coming up as well. They've obviously got the big game against Loughborough at the Rec in two weeks, so they need an answer next week. Leeds Beckett on the other side. They're on a crescendo upwards, and it's exciting times. Yeah, and they've got a week off as well. You know, they're one of those nine teams this year in the league. They've got they've got the week off next year. They've got time to focus, prepare, reflect on what was an awesome result tonight for them. No matter what the performance was like, which which was good in parts, it's so much easier reflecting having won. And you know, it could have been very different. But at the end of the game, there they snuck it, and, and they move forward. I think they're not him away in two weeks. Yeah, new boys to the league. You know, they'll expect to go there and get the result, and uh, who knows where they can go from here. Good stuff, Hugo. Thank you very much. No problem. Righto, well, I mean, we couldn't have, brought you, couldn't have brought you much more there. We would consult the league tables, but obviously Leeds Beckett are top, having won the only fixture of the round so far. But there are two more that are happening on Friday, one of which is being brought live to you by us at 4.45. It is Nottingham Trent against Powerhouses Exeter. Our coverage will be starting at 4.15 from the, from the Bay. We're very grateful for you joining us today. On a day when the heavens opened, the gods ki smiled kindest on Leeds Beckett and they go away with the win. Thanks very much for joining us and catch you Friday.